Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto marries Fire Daimyo daughter Sasuke bashing. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by I like fear one to two and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1, Well that Ichiha brat really fucked you up. A deep menacing voice chided to the young blonde boy who lay unconscious in the valley of the end. The Kaiubi glanced around its empty cage, Naruto subconscious didn't say anything in reply. The great demon let out a huff before reaching his chakra out, he felt it pass through Naruto's body and fill him up, it was right about now that the demon came to understand just how grave Naruto's injuries were, he wasn't just unconscious, he was comatose. Damn brat. Well I can't just leave you to die in this wretched valley. The fox stated, more to himself, than his host, whom was well beyond hearing him at this point. The nine tails quickly flooded an immense amount of chakra into Naruto's body, forcing his wounds to begin healing, while at the same time, because of Naruto's condition, coma, allowing him to take control. Suddenly Naruto's eyes opened and for the first time, in 12 years, the nine tails was able to look upon the outside world. Using his chakra to work Naruto like a puppet the demon forced him to sit up, as he did, he felt an immense amount of chakra rush to Naruto's head, the Kaiubi could tell that Naruto had suffered an immense head wound from the fall he took after he and Sasuke collided. The demon also felt Naruto's ribs pop back into place from where Sasuke had punched him in the chest when they collided. Moving Naruto's body was difficult but not impossible, the great beast quickly figured out how to effectively pilot the idiot's body and got him to his feet. He glanced around and noticed Sasuke laying on his back a few feet away. His eyes were closed but his chest was raising and lowering, so he was alive. Brat. The demon spat as he looked at Sasuke, all you managed to do was scratch his headband you runt. The demon once again chided Naruto, even though he couldn't hear him. The nine tails felt a pressure release from Naruto's head as his chakra finished healing it, Naruto had landed directly on his head after he and Sasuke collided and the fall had cracked his skull open. As his head finished healing the beast did a quick check of all of Naruto's limbs and the rest of his body, making sure there were no injuries that he missed. He stopped as he was scanning Naruto's head, out of habit he replayed all of Naruto's memories, which to the great beast could be processed in a second or two. He paused something was wrong. He replayed Naruto's memories and it happened again. The memories just stopped a few weeks before Naruto graduated from the academy. The demon grinned wickedly. Oh my it's all gone. Your clone jutsu, your Rasengan, your friends, your sensei, that perverted old sage all of it's gone. The demon cheered almost triumphantly, oh I have just been granted a chance to rewrite things oh I do believe a change of scenery is in order. The nine tails took one last look around the valley through Naruto's eyes, the demon grimaced as the memories of his last battle in this valley returned to him. After a moment the memories faded and the demon refocused, he knew now that Naruto was healed, it would only be a matter of time until he woke up, so if he wanted to leave, he would have to go now. The tailed beast sent more of his chakra into Naruto, enveloping him in the one-tailed cloak. And like that with a single mighty leap, the demon, piloting Naruto's body, went hurtling out of the valley at top speed. Direction didn't matter, nor did destination the beast knew that the only things that kept Naruto anchored to the leaf were his friends and bonds he had formed, but now those were gone. The smile on the demon's face never vanished as he put as much distance between the leaf and Naruto as he could. Meanwhile, we couldn't find him. Pakin muttered as he and a few other members of Kakashi's pack returned to their master's side. Kakashi let out a tired sigh as he looked down at Sasuke, who was unconscious on the valley floor. He and his pack had been there for 20 minutes looking for Naruto, but they couldn't find him anywhere. Look Kakashi we can stay here the kid needs a doctor. Pakin told him as the little dog stood over Sasuke. I know Pak and I'll take Sasuke back to the village and I'll gather some of the trackers, do your best to try and find Naruto's scent while I'm gone. Kakashi's ordered as he knelt down and picked up his student. He positioned Sasuke on his back and gave another sigh before jumping onto the valley wall and then once more to leave it. Back at the village, my lady Kakashi Haddock has returned. And Anbu informed the slug princess. That's good, tell him to come see me. Tsunade ordered. Yes, ma'am. The Anbu replied before vanishing from the room. I wonder how it went. Jiraiya stated, he was leaning against the wall in Tsunade's office, waiting along with her for Kakashi and Naruto to return. We'll know soon enough. Tsunade replied. A few moments went by before Kakashi appeared in front of them, as always his face was indistinguishable. Report. Tsunade ordered when he appeared. Mission was a success, Sasuke has been retrieved. Though Naruto is missing. Kakashi added after a quick moment of thought. What? Both Tsunade and Jiraiya said in unison. I have my pack scouring the valley of the end, but they can't seem to locate him. With you permission my lady I would like to take some of the trackers back out with me and see if we can't find him. Kakashi explained. Tsunade stared at him for a few seconds before nodding. I'll go with you. 
Jirei offered, as Tsunade nodded. I would appreciate the help. Sasuke is at the hospital, I asked the Anbu to keep an eye on him while he's there. Kakashi told them as he turned to leave. I'll go see the boy myself. Tsunade said after a moment. Find him. She ordered the two of them as she walked towards her office door. Both quickly nodded and vanished. Tsunade let out an audible sigh as she marched out of her office and made her way to the hospital. A few minutes went by before she finally reached it, once there she quickly made her way to Sasuke's room, there were two Anbu standing outside the door, along with a familiar pink-haired girl leaning against the wall, opposite the door. My lady. Sakura stated happily when she saw her. Sakura. Have you heard? Tsunade asked as she reached the door. I heard some of the villagers saying the Kakashi sensei brought Sasuke back, but nothing else. Sakura replied. Naruto is missing. Tsunade flat out told her as she opened the door and stepped into the room, leaving Sakura dumbstruck. Later, this is bad Kakashi. Hirachimaru and the Nine Tails Chakra is all over this valley, it's impossible to separate the two. A sensory tracker told him. I know. Kakashi agreed, staring out across the valley. Naruto isn't skilled enough to move without leaving a trail, but the rain is making it hard to follow scent, so he has that advantage. The only two plausible scenarios is that he showed up to face Sasuke, beat him, and was taken by a third party. Jiraiya began to explain to the others. Or? Kakashi asked, eyeing him intently. Or he beat Sasuke and then ran. And Anbu interjected. Is it possible he was killed and his body is just floating downstream? One of the Anbu asked. No my hounds have been scouring up and down the valley, they can't find him. He's just not here. Kakashi replied, with a sigh. We have to keep looking, even if he is dead, his body contains secrets, secrets that we must retrieve. The Anbu stated after a moment. Naruto where are you? Kakashi said to himself as he let out a sigh and moved to continue the search. Two day later, far off in the land of lightning, in some no-name little village, Naruto sat alone in a back alley, the great beast still very much in control of his body. The demon was holding Naruto's headband in his hand, he stared at it for a few moments before snapping it in half and tossing it into a nearby garbage can. That settles that. The demon said to himself. The Nine Tails was so happy to be away from those lands, to finally be free of the wretched stench of the leaf village. He could slowly feel Naruto's subconscious gaining ground, he was starting to wake up, it would be another day or two, but he would be fine. All except for the missing memories of the past few months. The farthest Naruto's memory now went was a week or so before the academy graduation exams. Okay the beast sighed as it began to try and recreate memories of Naruto's jutsu. Luckily the demon was able to use its own memory to create the memories for Naruto, which meant it could twist them however it liked. He made sure to give Naruto memories of his two signature techniques, the Shadow Clone Jutsu and the Rasengan. In the end he didn't give Naruto any new memories, just added in a few things so that Naruto would remember how to do the techniques when he woke up. You'll thank me for this kid that village treated you like garbage and all you ever did was love them. Now you're free and I intend to make you make the best of it, the demon paused in his cage and looked around in the empty blackness. Suddenly a feeling rose up in him and he suddenly shouted, do you see this Minato? I've taken your boy away from your precious village, and now he'll walk a path that I've set for him. I've won. The great beast declared triumphantly. After a few moments of nothing but silence, the demon settled down and mused over how easy it was to control Naruto's body. He guessed that because Naruto was comatose and his consciousness was currently checked out, attributed to his easy control over the body. The demon was sure that when Naruto began to wake up, that it would become incredibly difficult to maintain control. The demon smiled wickedly this was too good. He decided to get some food into Naruto's body, he pulled back most of his cloak and decided to ditch Naruto's orange jacket, once that was in the garbage the beast made its way to the market, he kept his head low and avoided eye contact, the dark marks on Naruto's face did draw a few gazes, but no one recognized him, so they chose to ignore it. Using what little money Naruto had on him, the beast bought him food and water, the merchant didn't seem to care that all Naruto did was walk up point to what he wanted and then handed over the money. The demon quickly fed Naruto and then found another comfy alley to sleep in. As he settled Naruto's body down, the demon began to feel another force begin to take over Naruto's body, it was slow but strong. Naruto must have been regaining his senses, it would be a few hours still, but he would be awake soon. Now what am I going to tell you? The demon thought. A few seconds went by before a plan formed in the might beast's brain. He began to plant fragmented memories in Naruto's brain, bits and pieces of his battle at the Valley of the End, though he made sure to change a few things around like the conversations that he and Sasuke had. The Nine Tails smiled as he finished implanting the fake memories, he then continued to think up the lie he would tell Naruto, and slowly but surely it all took shape. Later, where am I? Naruto asked, as he lay in a dark room, in a pool of water. Hello, Naruto. Came a deep and menacing voice. 
Naruto immediately shot up and was greeted to the massive side of the nine tails sitting beyond a cage. Naruto let out a loud scream and shot to his feet, ready to run. Calm down Brad I can't hurt you from in here. The beast told him, slightly annoyed. Well what are you? Where am I? Naruto asked, as he slightly cowered from the beast. I am the nine-tailed fox, and this is your body. The beast answered truthfully. The nine tails Naruto stared in horror for a second before letting out another wail of terror. Shut up. The demon roared at him. Naruto's head immediately dropped, and he stared at the floor. We're inside your subconscious having a little chat, because I just got finished searching through your memories, and I have found that you are suffering from amnesia. The demon explained. Naruto looked back up at him, though didn't look him in the eyes, suddenly a confused look took up residence on his face, what's amnesia? It's the demon began, and then stopped and growled at the boy's ignorance before continuing. You hit your head and lost some of your memories. What? How did that happen? Naruto asked, still confused. Look what's the last thing you remember? The beast asked. Naruto stared at him for a second before thinking back, the last clear memory he had was his classmates laughing at him, after Iruka dragged him into school. But there was something else, another memory, bits and flashes of a fight between him and Sasuke. I was fighting Sasuke. What was I doing fighting Sasuke? Naruto asked. He was trying to kill you. The demon told him, at the sound of that Naruto kind of cringed. Why would Sasuke want to kill me? Naruto finally got the courage to ask. You pulled a prank on him and embarrassed him in front of many villagers. So in turn he ran you out of the village, but that wasn't enough, no he chased after you and tried to kill you, and do you know what your people let him? The fox told him. The demon inwardly grinned as a look of shock and horror appeared on Naruto's face. Do you understand why they hated you so much? It was because of me they hated your very existence, simply because I was inside of you. The fox explained to him. So it was your fault. You were the reason they hated me so much. Why? What did I ever do to deserve this? Naruto asked as he held back tears. The fox narrowed his eyes at Naruto, everything had fallen into place, now it was time to make his move. I'm sorry. The great beast told him. You're sorry. Naruto repeated, not expecting that from the nine-tailed fox. I am sorry that you have to suffer because of me. Whenever I am released from the cage my own power overwhelms me, I lose control and go on a rampage. Though once I am sealed within a host, my mind becomes my own again it is only when this happens, am I able to think clearly so for that, I am sorry. The fox told him. You lose control. Naruto stated taking a step towards the great fox. Yes I have too much power, and it drives me insane. Only inside of a person's body can I finally think clearly. I have watched you suffer for years at the hands of those abusive villagers I have so long to be able to help you. The beast was laying it on thick, knowing full well that Naruto would easily fall for it, as long as the fox showed him some compassion. So when you attacked the leaf, all those years ago? Naruto began to ask. The fox thought for a second, he hadn't thought about what to say if Naruto asked about that, after a quick moment a good lie came to mind. Your mother was my previous host when she gave birth to you a man with an orange mask attacked her and tried to release me from her body. He succeeded and I was let loose. Upon being freed my power consumed me and I went on a rampage your father was the one who stopped me. He sealed me inside of you in the hopes that you would one day bond with me, as your mother had before. The beast partially lied to him. You knew my mother? Wait. You said that my father sealed you inside of me, but the fourth Hokage was the guy who Naruto began to voice his confusion, but then stopped as realization struck him. Yes Naruto the fourth Hokage was your father. He sealed me inside of you, in the hopes that we could maintain the fragile balance that he and your mother tried so hard to maintain. The beast continued. What balance are you talking about? Naruto asked through tears, as he wiped his eyes. You are one of the nine Jinjiriki. Each sealed with a tailed beast. The villages use you as weapons, in order to maintain the balance of power between the villages. Your mother and father were two people that didn't follow that same doctrine. Your mother was brought to your village to serve as a defender of the village. Because she was a Jinchiriki, the people of your village decided to wed her to the man who would one day be Hokage, your father Minato Namikas. That way, he could keep a close eye on her and use her power more accordingly. Luckily for your mother, your father fancied her and fell deeply in love with her, and over time she began to feel the same. Your mother and father never agreed with the village's stance on Jinchiriki, they both believed that if a person could somehow bond with a tailed beast within them, then they could use that power for good. Your mother was my friend she was kind to me, and it saddens me greatly to know that she is gone. Your father put me inside of you in the hopes that the third Hokage and the rest of the village would follow through with his beliefs and search for a way to allow a Jinchiriki and its Biju to live in peace with one another and not be used as weapons. The fox was laying it on as thick as he could and Naruto was bowling his eyes out. Sadly the villagers did not respect the wishes of the fourth. They shunned you like they had to every other Jinchiriki. 
they abused, neglected, and tortured you for things that you had no control over. I'm sorry to say that most of the people that showed you any kindness were only doing so because you were a Jinchurikia weapon. The fox continued, by now Naruto was trembling with anger as memories of the abuse he had suffered all his life came flooding to mind. There was only one who truly cared for you Aruki Amino. The fox told him. At that Naruto stopped trembling and looked up at the fox. Aruka sensei Naruto asked, tears still hot on his face. Aruka lost his parents when I went on a rampage, and yet he could never bring himself to hate you. You were like his little brother and because of the way that he treated you, because of how nice he was to you, he often caught flack for it from his superiors. He was the only one who cared about you Naruto the great beast said, it sounded almost sad, well as sad as it could sound. I have longed for this meeting since your birth Naruto. Your father was afraid that my power would corrupt your mind so, he set the seal to only weaken when you were old enough. If he had known how the village was going to treat you, I'm sure he would have weakened it so that we could have met earlier. I have watched your horrible life and yearned for the chance to meet with you to tell you why the village treated you so badly. I'm sorry that it took me so long. The beast apologized, this time actually sounding sincere. No, I'm sorry. If I knew that you were trapped in here, alone, I would have made the attempt sooner to meet you. Naruto stated as he wiped tears from his eyes and looked at the fox gratefully. The Nine Tails was absolutely jumping for joy on the inside, he was very close to having Naruto wrapped around his large furry finger. Thank you Naruto. The beast thanked him, even offering a polite bow just to emphasize his gratitude. So how did I get away from Sasuke? Naruto asked after a moment. He was kicking your ass when suddenly the seal weakened enough for me to give some of my power to you. That was enough to turn the tide and you managed to beat him, though you lost consciousness and fell over 35 feet and landed on your head. Cracking your skull open on the hard rock of the valley floor. I was able to take control of your body and heal your wounds while at the same time getting you the hell out of there. The fox told him. Wow you can do that? Naruto asked with a little amazement. Heal your body, yes. Pauses you only when you're comatose. The fox answered. Wow so where are we now? Naruto asked. The land of lightning. The demon answered. That far Naruto muttered, his thoughts slowly crawled towards his home. The fox sensed it and made a quick move to quash all of Naruto's thoughts of home forever. Naruto the only thing left in the leaf is Aruka and I'm sure if he could talk to you now he would tell you to stay away. Stay away from all of the hatred and abuse. Stay away from all of the people that would use you as a weapon. Think about it Naruto outside of the leaf no one knows that you are my Jinchuriki. No one will look at you and just see the nine tails you can be whomever you want to be out here. You can be free. Free of persecution and of disrespect. You can live a normal life or join up as a lightning ninja. I can help train you how to use ninjutsu if you want think about it. You can do and be whatever you want. The nine tails told him and he knew as a sad grin appeared on Naruto's face that he had won him over. Your right Aruka sensei would want me to be happy. I can be whatever I want out here. Naruto agreed. I specifically chose the land of lightning because it has no diplomatic relations with the leaf, you don't have to worry about the leaf finding you here, and even if they do, they would have to take the risk of running foul of the wreckage, so I think you're good. The fox informed him. Okay can I still talk to you if I leave here? Naruto asked. Yes. Just will yourself out and you should wake up where I left you. I'm connected to your brain, just think a question and you'll hear my reply. The Nine Tails explained. Cool. Naruto stated as he suddenly woke up. Naruto looked around to see he was laying uncomfortable in an alley. An alley you couldn't have found me in to sleep at. Naruto thought to the beast. Hey with the money you had on you, you should be glad I was able to keep you fed. It shot back. Well I guess it's time to start a new life. Naruto stated as he took a few steps out of the alley and looked around. He let out a sad sigh and began to walk. There were people walking around him and some went out of their way to avoid him. Naruto was about to worry when the fox chimed in. You look like shit and smell like ass. Naruto looked down at himself he was just wearing his t-shirt and his pants were torn and dirty. He smiled as he realized why these people were avoiding him. He smiled because he knew that with a bath and some new clothes he would immediately become just another face to them. A face that with time could become anything. Time elapsed three and a half years later. Yo. 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 Bro, what I gotta be here for? Killer B whined to his brother as they took a seat in a small stadium that overlooked a small arena. That was weak, B. The ox commented from inside of him. You keep that wrapping up for even one second longer and I'm gonna beat your ass into the ground, now sit down and shut up. A told him with authority. Come on bro, don't beat up on me for being free. B chimed back, but a glare from A caused him to immediately shut up. Lord A. It's so good to see you again. A large strong man stated merrily to A as he joined them in the single high-class booth that overlooked the arena. He was white-skinned and large just like A, obviously in his late 40s or early 50s. 
He had brownish hair that was starting to gray and a medium length beard. He had a somewhat jolly look about him, which was interesting, considering the many scars on his face, told of a very dark past Lord Hyoto was the feudal lord of the southernmost provinces of the Land of Lightning and served as their buffer with the mainland. A stood from his seat and immediately greeted the man with a warm handshake. Lord Hyoto it's good to see you again. As it is to see you. I see you've brought your brother along with you. It's good to see you again Lord B. The big man greeted them. Though my brother brought me here out of spite, I am eager to see a good fight. B replied, motioning toward the arena, which earned a laugh from Hyoto. So Lord Hyoto, what exactly is this fight for? One of A's bodyguards asked. He was black of skin with white hair, which covered one of his eyes. Ah Dari it's good to see you again and you too see. Hyoto replied looking at A's two bodyguards. The other being a white blonde haired man, both offered him quick bows before looking to him for an answer. Well you see I'm getting on in years and I need to ensure that my line remains strong. My daughter has already informed me that she would take no man as a husband who couldn't best her in battle. So I secretly set up this duel to test her against a couple of my finest warriors. If she beats all of them then I can offer her some sort of prize, but if one of them manages to beat her, then I will have the two wed. Hyodo explained. I'm going to assume she doesn't know what this competition is really for. A asked, giving his old friend a knowing smirk. Nope and neither do the men participating. Hyodo added. But you at least make sure that none of them were married. Derry asked, giving the old lord a bemused look. Of course. The bonds of marriage are a sacred thing, and those bonds have to be tempered with love, trust, and respect. I would never force a man out of wedlock Kyoto added. So, just so we're clear, you're going to have a bunch of guys fight your daughter, and if one of the guys wins he gets to plow her. Derry asked, his look hadn't changed. Both C and B smirked and started to giggle at that. Well when you say it like that, it sounds like a stupid idea. Hyoto pouted. So why did you ask me here? A finally asked. Well first we have a few very important missions we need to talk about, but the second reason was so that not only could you enjoy this fight, but I would like to ask you to offer your blessing to the man whom is to be my son-in-law and who is to rule by my daughter's side one day. Hyoto stated. A simply nodded, this kind of thing was common, he would often be called on to offer his blessing to young couples of noble families, as a show of good faith and a great relationship between the hidden cloud village and the feudal lords. Very well I will offer my blessing to the victor, though it will be interesting to see as there will even be one. Last time I saw her, your daughter was quite the viscous little firebolt. A commented, indeed she was, and she's only become more like her mother over the years. Hyoto laughed. Are you speaking of me behind my back, Deso? Came a woman's voice. They all turned and looked as a very beautiful woman in her mid to late thirties entered into the booth. She looked pumped, as if she had just come from a workout. She was dressed in long blue pants, and she wore a short elegant kimono on top. Hello dearest wife. I was only telling Lord A here about Naomi and how much she takes after you. Deso Hyoto replied, with a grin. Greetings Lord A, Lord B, C, Derry. The woman stated with a smile, she looked much younger than she really was. She had dark brown, almost black hair that reached the middle of her back, she also had dark wide eyes. The four cloud ninja offered their greetings to the woman. Did you just come back from the training yard, A Anne? Deso Hyoto asked, as his wife sat next to him. Yes I was training with Naomi. She's eager to prove herself in this little competition of yours. Ayan replied, with a smirk. Did you end up making your choice on who you wish to participate? Deso asked his wife. Yes. Ayan replied with a smirk. Oh good. Deso stated, then glanced over at A, who made a face. When I told her my idea to wed Naomi, she said she would only agree to it if I allowed her to choose a fighter to participate. Deso explained. Who did you end up choosing my lady if you don't mind me asking? C asked, politely. The Kitsune. A Anne replied with a grin. The Kitsune wow this should be interesting. Deso stated, with wide eyes. Who is the Kitsune if you don't mind me asking? C asked. Derry, B and A listened intently as suddenly a gate opened down in the arena and warriors began to spill out of it. The Kitsune is a young mercenary that showed up in these parts about two years ago. He's kind of a local legend. He has shinobi skills but no allegiance. Deso explained. Is he a rogue? A asked, aiming his old friend intently. No I don't think so he's young, about my daughter's age, and his form is very sloppy, plus he doesn't fight like any cloud ninja I ever seen. So unless here and here from another country, I think he is just self-taught. Deso explained. If he's not that good, then why is he a local legend? Derry asked. I didn't say he wasn't good, I said he was sloppy. The kid lacks finesse, but he's good. Plus he possesses a few incredibly rare high-level jutsu. I have personally seen him use the Shadow Clone Jutsu on more than one occasion, and I have heard stories that he is capable of using a technique that from what has been described to me, sounds very much like the 4th Hokage's Rasengan. 
they so told them. Really well then this should be interesting. A commented as he focused on the men and one woman that had spilled out into the arena. His eyes drifted over them, there were 24 warriors. Most were shinobi. Two were even cloud ninja, he kept scanning them and came across a young girl, probably 16, she had short, shoulder-length brown hair, one of her eyes was slightly covered by her bangs. She was white of skin with dark eyes just like her mother. The young girl was average height, with a petite build, but not grotesque. She was slightly muscular from what A could see at this distance, though once again she wasn't so muscular that she was grotesque. The young girl had a fair beauty to her, though to anyone who knew her, they would know that the beauty was not part of her personality at all. The girl was stubborn, self-righteous, and prideful. A had remembered the last time he had met the girl, she told him he looked like a shaved ape and that he should go back to the zoo. He ended up making her eat dirt and busting B's nose, who had overheard her remark and started laughing. This girl though had a reason to be prideful. Her father was an amazing shinobi by any right and had fought in the last two great wars, while her mother was a taijutsu prodigy whom often dreamed of traveling to the leaf village to face their own green beast. By all accounts Naomi Hyoto was a prodigy, A had to smirk at the thought, a prodigy, and yet a stubborn runt without an ounce of humility. He decided to continue his search of the contenders, and his eyes came to rest on a peculiar sight. A blonde-haired boy, about Naomi's age whom A recognized almost immediately. Well isn't this interesting. They all heard B mutter to himself. A was about to say something when suddenly Daiso stood and addressed the small crowd that had gathered to watch the fight, as well as the fighters themselves. Greetings one and all. We are gathered here today before the Rakage himself to enjoy a spectacle of combat. These brave warriors have offered themselves up as contestants in a free-for-all brawl that will end only with one winner. The winner will receive a prize befitting their skills. Now let's get this fight going. Begin. They so shouted to all the warriors that had gathered around the edges of the arena, spaced evenly apart. Suddenly a few men charged either into the center of the arena or simply along the edge towards each other. The fighting quickly erupted as a handful of jutsu were unleashed, most were lightning. Naomi rushed forward and picked a target, a man that had his back to her, she brought her hands up and weaved together a few hand signs, suddenly she was at his back. Lightning style. Channeled burst strike. She muttered as suddenly her arm lit up with lightning. Before the man could turn to investigate, she slammed her fist into his back, allowing the lightning to release from her hand as she punched. The result was a loud bright burst of lightning, and suddenly the man went rushing forward. He slammed into the wall of the arena, leaving a large crack in it as he fell to the floor, obviously unconscious. And the first KO goes to Naomi. That's my girl. Daiso cheered for his daughter. His wife simply rolled her eyes and smiled, while Derry and C both nodded, she was indeed an impressive young girl. A and B however weren't watching her they were watching someone else, the blonde boy who still stood at the edge of the arena watching the fight they both knew whom he resembled, and if their combined gut feeling was correct, then they knew who he was. Down in the arena, so how do you think I should do this? Quick and quite, showing off my finesse. Or flashy. Naruto asked the fox. Well seeing as how I prefer flashy and you lack finesse, I think we should just dive in and have some fun. The fox replied. Naruto thought about that for a second before smiling and saying aloud, agreed. And with that Naruto created a few shadow clones and charged into the fray, unaware of the eyes locked on him. Unaware that his life was about to change once again. Okay that's it let me know what you think and I hope you enjoy. I'm aiming for a much darker story, but even in dark stories there can be laughs and light moments. Also I enjoy creating my own jutsu, so if along the lines of the story, you feel like offering up your own made-up techniques, I always open to hear about it. The speed at which I update will depend on whether people like it or not. I hope you enjoy and feel free to offer suggestions or advice, I'm always open criticism. So until next time. Chapter 2 Naruto quickly sidestepped the punch and drove his near eye into his attacker's gut. HMPH, I bet that hurt. The Nine Tails commented. Naruto watched as the man recoiled a few steps before continuing his assault. He rushed forward and drove his fist into the man's face, right as a clone swept his legs out from under him. The man quickly fell to the ground and Naruto was quickly on him. He pinned the man to the ground with one arm and then with his free hand, punched the guy's lights out. Naruto glanced up from his fallen opponent and scanned the arena. There were four people left, and he recognized two of them, one was you young co-captain of Daiso Hyoto's guard, and the other was his daughter. That little brat is still in this. Naruto thought to himself. From what I can tell, she is pretty skilled. The fox commented. Yeah uh, but still you'd figure since this is the only chance that they're ever going to have, the guards would gang up on her and teach her a lesson or two. Naruto said back to the fox. She is an annoying little brat isn't she? If only she wasn't so good looking the fox agreed. Got a crush on her? Naruto asked. No but you do. The fox replied. What? No, I don't. Naruto almost shouted back to the fox. 
I can read your mind kid and I know that you were picturing her nude when you were pounding your meat the other day. The demon shot back. Hey. No. Never. We promise never to talk about those moments. Naruto shouted, his face turning red. Aw did I embarrass you little guy? The Nine Tails asked. Fuck you. Naruto growled in reply as he tried to shake away his embarrassment. Hey there's nothing wrong with thinking of a pretty girl like that. Especially when it's her. That tone fit body the fox continued to embarrass him. Shut up. Naruto stated, his face turning redder. Those big brown eyes the fox continued. Shut up. Naruto shouted at him again. I'm guessing that she has perky tits. The beast commented. Shut up. Naruto shouted as loud as he could, his face was as red as a tomato. Plus she's mean. And mean girls like it rough. The demon added. For fuck's sake. Naruto threw up his arms and returned to the fight. Aw oh, what's wrong? The truth hurt. The nine tails asked with a wicked grin as Naruto left. Just drop it alright. Regardless of what I may or may not feel, she's a client's daughter and you told me to never get involved personally with clients. Naruto gave him a thought before focusing on the fight. Ah so you do like her you like the way she talks down to people it gets you off doesn't it? The Nine Tails laughed, but Naruto just ignored him. Naruto glanced over just a time to see Naomi send another man flying with a lightning style jutsu. She turned to deal with another man whom she must have been fighting earlier cause he was slowly inching away from her as she approached him. Naruto shook his head at the cowardly man and looked over to see the co-captain of the guard aiming the two as well, he suddenly looked over at Naruto and charged towards him. Naruto guessed that the co-captain wanted to finish him off quickly before dealing with Naomi who he probably considered a bigger threat. Naruto rape him. The fox ordered as the co-captain charged toward him. Naruto just smirked at the order and began to backpedal to avoid the co-captain's strikes, he had electrically charged his sword and was swinging it at Naruto. Naruto had to move fast to avoid the strike, though as he backpedaled a plan formed in his mind, as the man swung his sword Naruto hopped back out of the way, but he made sure to allow his hands to come together for just a split moment so that a shadow clone could be created. Naruto's plan worked because he was too focused on Naruto, the co-captain didn't hear the shadow clone appear behind him. He continued to attack Naruto and finally drove him to the arena wall. Naruto ducked one of his swings and quickly pushed him back. Right as he did Naruto saw the clone appear behind the guy with the Rasengan in his hand. It wasn't the regular Rasengan, it was a lighter blue, almost see-through version that was used mostly as a quick knockback attack, but because the co-captain was so close the rock hard wall, this jutsu's power would be increased. Naruto quickly rolled to the right as the clone struck the co-captain in the back with the weak Rasengan. The co-captain flew forward a few feet and slammed into the wall with a great deal of force, the wall cracked and the man's nose was obviously broken. He fell to the ground and wailed in pain, Naruto knew that he had won the duel. He glanced up and saw Naomi punch her opponent in the throat, sending him to the ground choking for air. She immediately scanned the arena and came to focus on Naruto who was the only one left standing. Oh she spotted you, I wonder if she remembers you? The tailed beast commented. How could she I've always worn a mask around her? Naruto replied. HMPH anywhere ape her too. The fox stated nonchalantly. You gotta stop telling me to rape people. Naruto stated as he rose and prepared to face off against her. Why it's fun. The fox replied. Naruto just shook his head and focused on Naomi as she charged towards him. As she raced towards him, she brought up her hands and suddenly two clones were at her sides. Naruto quickly made two shadow clones of his own and countercharged. As the two reached each other, Naruto and his clones dove at Naomi. Naruto's main body plus the shadow clone to his right passed right through, his other clone was drilled in the face by the real Naomi and it suddenly popped. Naruto quickly shot to his feet and charged towards her. She quickly weaved together a few hand signs and stuck her palm out towards him. Lightning style. Spark bullet. She said in a low voice as her arm turned into a lightning rod and suddenly a small blast of energy shot out of her palm towards him. Naruto's clone knocked the real him out of the way and took the full force of the jutsu, he immediately popped. Though this didn't deter Naruto, he was quickly on his feet and he summoned two more clones to his sides. He sent the two rushing forward to distract her while he prepared another low-level Rasengan. The distraction worked, the clones got on both sides of her and delivered a few strikes. Naomi's mother was a Tejutsu expert and she had been training Naomi since she was little, so she didn't have any problems dealing with Naruto's clones. She ducked a punch from one and drove her fist into its stomach causing it to pop. The other tried to grab her by wrapping his arms around her, but she was having none of it, she quickly stomped on his foot and when he winced and leaned forward, she slammed her head into his, causing his clone to stumble backwards. Naomi quickly turned around and delivered a kick right to the clone's face, she seemed slightly surprised that it popped, forgetting for a moment that the real Naruto had lagged behind. She turned right as the real Naruto made his move. Rasengan. He shouted as he drove the low-level Rasengan into her gut. 
Naomi held a look of surprise for a moment before she suddenly went flying back into the center of the arena, where she landed with a few rolls. Naruto began to walk towards her as she struggled to her feet, he could see that she had a busted lip and that her stomach had been slightly burned by the Rasengan, she wasn't going to be continuing this fight, she had run out of stamina. She let out an angry yell and suddenly started to weave more hand signs together. Naruto only made a face and then created about three dozen shadow clones to emphasize his point. Naomi stared at all of them for a moment before she stopped and hung her head in defeat. They so saw this and quickly stood. Wow that was an entertaining fight. I do believe we have a winner. After he finished speaking he walked forward and hopped down into the arena. He was quickly followed by his wife, as well as the Cloud Shinobi, A, B, C, and Derry. Good fight Naomi with a little bit of training you'll be as good as me. Daiso praised his daughter, who now stood glaring daggers at Naruto, more than a little pissed that she was beaten. And you well you never failed to amaze me Naruto. Daiso praised Naruto as he approached them. Thanks old man it was a fun fight. Yumi's got a lot of skill. Naruto stated with a smile. Yumi? Both Derry and C said at the same time. It was Naruto's nickname for Naomi. Aan informed them. As she heard the name, Naomi's eyes lit up with flame. You? She hissed as she started to take steps towards him. She figured it out. The fox warned him. I know. Naruto thought back in reply. As he raised his hands in surrender. Naruto had done a few jobs for the Hyoto family, though whenever he was on the job, Naruto wore a kitsu mask and a hood so that no one could identify him. Daiso and Aan were the only two clients that had ever seen his face before. Fucker. Naomi hissed at him. Hi Naomi how are you? Naruto asked, trying to be respectful, knowing full well that she was having none of it. You're lucky she just fought nine people and is worn out, otherwise she would be on you in a flash. The nine tails told him. Naruto just continued to smile and hold his hands up in surrender. He knew that Naomi would do anything just for the chance to thrash him about, and Naruto knew why. He had made a mistake in his past, a big one, and it earned him the ire of this young girl. Flashback. Two years ago, one night, because he was horny and stupid, Naruto decided to go spy on the girl's side of the local spas. The Nine Tails had no problem with it and simply asked Naruto to wear a different mask so that if they were caught, he wouldn't be recognized. So Naruto decided to go with irony and wore a pig mask, which sent the Nine Tails into a frenzy of laughter. As Naruto stood upon a tree watching women come and go, a familiar sight caught his eyes. It was Lady Aan and her daughter, Naomi. Naruto blushed deeply upon seeing them, his eyes focused on them intently as they removed their towels and stepped into the water. The two were similar in terms of body composition, since both practiced taijutsu often and were therefore physically fit. Aan was exceedingly stunning she had milky white skin and very fine womanly curves that were topped off by two beautiful C-cup breasts. Her beauty made the other girls in the spa stare at her with jealous eyes. Naruto ogled the beautiful woman for a few moments before his gaze fell onto the daughter. Naruto knew Naomi in passing, since he had, at that time, performed a few missions for Lord Hyodo, and he knew of her as a stuck-up brat. Naomi wanted to prove that she was an amazing shinobi, so she often would challenge her guards to fights. Her goal was to one day pass up her father in terms of skills, since he was a legend in the Land of Lightning. The old guy had fought in the Second and Third Great Ninja Wars, so he had a great deal of skill. Naruto grinned as he began to eye up Naomi, whom was his age at the time. He had only spoken to her once before and she had never seen his face or hair for that matter. The first time he spoke to her, he gave her the nickname Yumi which she hated. Though after hearing about Naruto's skill, she was eager to test herself, though Naruto didn't feel like it and blew her off, which earned him the young girl's wrath. He continued to stare at her, beautiful just like her mother, pale skin, he could also tell that she was going to be stunning just like her mother, though even at 14, her breasts were still just small little mounds sticking out of her chest, but that didn't matter boobs were boobs to Naruto. Hey kid she's seen you. The fox informed him with a grin, knowing that this could lead to either Naruto getting laid or chaos either way, he was going to enjoy this. Naruto heard him and glanced up from Naomi's breasts to her face and saw that she was just staring off. Naruto was confused for a second until he figured out whom the fox was referring to. He glanced over at Aan and found her eyes locked on him. Gah. Naruto let out a scream and fell from the tree. He laid on the ground staring up at the sky for a moment as he heard the ladies in the spa let out cries of embarrassment. After a few seconds he sat up and glanced around as suddenly the wooden wall surrounding the spas exploded outward. Naruto watched in horror as Naomi and about six other women marched out of the spa, murder in their eyes. All of the women were still in towels as they locked onto Naruto and began marching towards him. He was staring at them with fear in his eyes as suddenly Aan leaned out from the broken remains of the spa wall and looked at him. He locked eyes with her and suddenly she smiled and winked at him. Both Naruto and the nine tails adopted the same look of confusion. Naruto was snapped out of his stupor when he noticed Naomi weaving hand signs. 
Naruto shot to his feet, let out a cry of terror and turned to run. He had just about reached the end of the street when suddenly he caught a ball of lightning in the center of his back. Naruto was able to stop himself from falling and made it around the corner. He spent the rest of the night laying in a back alley healing from the burn in the center of his back, all the while the Nine Tails was laughing his ass off. That was a bad day, but it wasn't what earned him Naomi's wrath, no what earned him that was when he showed up for a mission that was to be given by Lord Hyodo, a few days later, and he ran into Naomi. As always Naomi wanted to fight the Kitsune, and Naruto told her he was busy, though instead of yelling at him or throwing a fit like she usually did, this time she chose to attack him. She weaved together a few hand sighs and threw a ball of lightning at him when his back was turned. Naruto heard it coming and immediately jumped out of the way. Though because of his surprise he let out a scream. And sadly for him, Naomi had a very good memory and recognized his scream as the one that the pig pervert had made before. You. You were the one spying on me and mother. Naomi accused. What? No. Naruto replied, still wearing his kitsune mask so she couldn't see his face. Liar. Naomi hissed at him as she began to weave more hand signs together. Run kid. The fox shouted at him. Naruto let out another wail as Naomi dived at him with a fist full of lightning and punched the ground at his feet. Naruto was able to get out of the way in time to avoid injury. Wait. Can't we talk about this? Naruto asked, holding his hands up in surrender. Shut up and die you pervert. Naomi hissed at him before charging at him again. And from there she proceeded to chase him all throughout the village of Aski, attempting to murder him for his perversion. And from there began an eternal game of cat and mouse, where Naruto would have to infiltrate a ski in order to talk with Lord Hyodo, who gave some of the best missions, money-wise, and then he would have to sneak out without Naomi finding him, otherwise a chase would ensue. And flashback, Naruto was snapped out of his flashback by its sudden punch to the face, he stumbled backwards as his hand shot to his face. Ow. Naruto whined. Pervert. Naomi hissed at him darkly as she cracked her knuckles for another punch. Ayan suddenly appeared at her daughter's side with a big smile on her face, how did you enjoy fighting the Kitsune? She asked her daughter. You're alright but this fight doesn't count since I already fought a bunch of people before you. Naomi replied. If I promise you a rematch, will you not hit me again? Naruto asked as he rubbed his nose. Baby. Naomi chastised him. Naruto simply gave her a look before looking at Deso Hyodo. Hey there old man how you doing? I'm good Naruto I see you're still in form. Deso replied with a big smile. Thanks been working hard these last few months. Naruto replied with a little embarrassment. Deso was one of the few people Naruto considered to be his friend, the old guy was very down to earth, he may not have been the best leader in terms of politics and economy, but he was beloved by the people and the other feudal lords. Deso hated to be stuck in his castle all day, so he would often venture out into the village to hang out at the bars and talk with the citizenry. More than once he had treated Naruto to dinner at some of the more reputable places in a ski Deso liked them because they were more fun. On one occasion, not recognizing him, a drunk began to bicker with Lord Hyodo, which ended in a full-scale bar fight. Deso walked away from that fight with a grin on his face and broken rib. Well Naruto it's good to see. Anyway you're the winner, it's time to tell you what you've won. Deso stated. Naruto's face lit up that's the reason he participated in the fight, because Lady Aan had told him that there would be an incredible award if he won. You Naruto of the Kitsune are to be wed to my daughter, Princess Naomi Hyodo. Deso declared. Naruto's jaw immediately hit the ground and the fox burst out laughing. No. No way in hell am I marrying this perverted troll. Naomi shouted at her father. Naomi. As a loving father, I came to you and asked what kind of man you wanted to be wed to, in response you gave me only one prerequisite. That he be capable of beating you in combat. Naruto has done that and stories of his skill will more than suffice as proof of his talent in actual combat. Deso replied, keeping his smile. But father Naomi started to argue. Wait don't I get a say in this? Naruto asked as he picked up his jaw. Of course Naruto, speak your mind. Deso replied, still smiling. Well I mean it's not that I have anything wrong with it, it's just Naruto tried to voice his protest without being offensive to one of the few people that have been kind to him since he left the leaf. What am I not good enough for you? Naomi suddenly asked, earning everyone's attention. She stopped when she realized the words that had just come out of her mouth, it was her pride that said that, not her. See Naruto. She would love to marry you. Deso stated. What the hell is wrong with that chick I thought she hated me. Naruto asked the nine tails. I don't know maybe she's just as infatuated with you as you are with her. The fox replied back with a giggle. I am not infatuated with her. Naruto shot back to the fox. The nine tails simply let out a huff and laughed. No I don't want to marry him. He's a worthless toad. Naomi whined. How right you are. The nine tails agreed. Shut up. Naruto muttered back to the fox. Look I have nothing against you Lord Hyodo, but I really need to think about this. 
Naruto began as he came up with a fitting excuse to get him out of the situation. Marriage is a big step and I don't know if I'm ready to give up my life of freedom. Like I said, nothing personal, but I have to really think about this. Naruto finished offering an apologetic bow to Lord Hyodo. I understand Naruto. I asked Reikage here to offer his blessing to the man whom is to be my daughter's husband. I do not wish to ask Lord Reikage to return at a later date, so I must ask for your answer before the Reikage leaves to return home. You have three days. Daiso replied to him, suddenly becoming serious. Thank you Lord Hyodo. And just so you know Naomi this decision has nothing to do with you. It's more like me wanting to be selfish. Just so you know, I think you're an incredible, beautiful, and skilled Kanoichi, and any guy would be lucky to be married to you. I hope I have not offended you by not giving my immediate answer. But I truly need to think about this, so with your permission, I need to go and think about this. Naruto stated in a manner that was unlike him. The Nine Tails had taught him a lot over the past few years how to be courteous was one of the lessons. The Nine Tails had hoped it would stop Naruto from getting into trouble with any nobleman. It looks like the lesson paid off. Naomi stared at him for a second before turning her head to hide a slight blush. Yes, you may go. She muttered in a formal manner, and like that Naruto turned and left. Lord Hyodo I need to speak with you in private. A stated in an authoritative manner as Naruto left. Of course let's head back to the castle. A and could you stay here and make sure that the men get some medical attention. Daiso asked his wife. She simply smiled and nodded. A short while later, so what do you need to speak with me about? Daiso asked a rakage as they entered into one of Daiso's private offices. You colossal idiot. Do you have any idea who that kid was? A went off on him. Yes, he's the fourth Hokage's son. Daiso replied with a stale look. You knew? A asked with a little shock. Yes, and just like you, I suspect that he's also the Nine Tails Jinchuriki. Daiso replied in a cool tone of voice. A made a face and glanced at B, who only nodded in reply. So the rumors are true, the fourth Hokage did put the Nine Tails inside of his own son. A stated as he remembered what his spies had told him about many years ago when a blonde-haired boy matching Minato's description appeared in the leaf. It wasn't until later that A came to believe that the boy was the Nine Tails Jinchuriki due to the leaf's treatment of him. If you knew all of this, Lord Hyodo, then why did you ask that boy to marry your daughter? C asked. Yes why? You do realize that when the leaf hears about this it's going to be war. A stated to his old friend, giving him an icy glare. Not if they wed immediately and I retire. My daughter will take my place as lord of the southernmost provinces, plus she will take my position on the Imperial Lightning Council. That will grant her and her direct family protection under Imperial law. Daiso explained to them. You intend to bring the Nine Tails under the Land of Lightning's control. Derry stated with a bit of shock. The nations had always fought for the Biju, but they almost never succeeded in breaking the balance of power that had remained constant over the year. You think the Fire Daimyo will approve of this? The moment he figures out that we have the Nine Tails, he'll call for our heads, and unless the Emperor wants a civil war, then he will force the Lightning Daimyo to give up the Nine Tails. A informed him. The Fire Daimyo won't let this information get out, because the only people who will know that he is the Nine Tails Jinchuriki will be us and the Lightning Daimyo. Daiso replied, cool as a cucumber. What about the Leaf and the Fire Daimyo? A asked, not understanding what Daiso hoped he could achieve by trying to wed his daughter to the Nine Tails Jinchuriki. Have you heard that the Leaf's Jinchuriki is missing? Daiso asked, with a tilt of his head. No, but it's obvious that he is. A replied, still confused. Exactly if I had to venture a guess the only person outside of the Leaf village that knows that their Jinchuriki is gone is the Fire Daimyo. The Fire Daimyo won't make a big fuss over this because if he does, then everyone's going to know that the Leaf has lost one of its greatest assets. Plus without their Jinchuriki the Leaf has lost any leverage it may have had in negotiations with us. If I marry him to my daughter then not only will he become a citizen of the Land of Lightning, but I will give him a home, a family and a reason to fight for the Cloud. Daiso explained. The Cloud? I get the Lightning, but why would the boy want to fight for the Cloud? You're not making any sense. A replied, shaking his head with confusion, as B and the others listened intently. You have someone someone that Naruto can relate to someone he can understand. As a fellow Jinchuriki, B you understand what the boy has been through. I don't know Naruto's past, but I do know that he must have had a harsh life if he ran away from it. B is the most powerful Jinchuriki alive, but Naruto has one of the strongest of the nine, the Nine Tails. With guidance and compassion from us, Naruto could become a great asset to the Cloud and in turn the Lightning. Daiso told them. When you put it like that I see the logic in your plan. But what if the Daimyo orders us to return him? To appease the Leaf and the Fire Daimyo? A asked. The Daimyo wouldn't be able to. If Naruto is married to my daughter then he will become a citizen of the Land of Lightning. Not to mention, his wife would be one of the feudal lords. 
Do you know what kind of chaos would result from the Lightning Daimyo exporting a citizen of the Lightning who happens to be a nobleman, and if you agree with my plan, then we can also make him a Cloud Shinobi, which would give us the argument that the boy now has secrets of the Cloud Village. Besides you may be loyal to the Daimyo, but we feudal lords are loyal to you Lord A you are our defender. You fight for us he doesn't. With your support the Cloud and the Land of Lightning will have everything it needs usurp the Land of Fire and the Leaf as the most powerful nation. Daiso answered. What do you think B? You would be the one to convince him to join the Cloud. If I followed through with this. A asked his brother. B stood quietly for a few moments before speaking. I would have to speak with him first. The life of a Jinjiriki is rough, in order to survive you've gotta be tough. I need to see for myself if this Naruto is a coward who ran from his duty or a broken heart who ran from his curse. B replied, only throwing a half-hearted rhyme because he felt like it. I agree with B if Naruto is a coward who simply ran from his village because he was afraid of what he was, then we have no use for him. But if he was mistreated, that would mean he holds no love for the leaf and we could welcome him to the lightning and the cloud with open arms. He would feel at home and might be willing to voluntarily join us. C added into the conversation. I gotta agree with C and B, if the kid suffered, then we would be painted as benevolent caregivers who took the boy in and kept him safe. If he suffered and we take him in, it could be good for our image, at the very least. Derry added. Okay day so I'll have B talk to Naruto if he chooses to wed your daughter. Depending on what B decides will depend on whether I offer my support or not. A told his old friend. Thank you Lord Rakage, I appreciate that you consider my proposal. Deso said with a small bow. Suddenly an ominous presence flooded the room. They all glanced around when suddenly B snapped his head towards the window. He stared for a second before jumping out the window. B. A shouted after him as he jumped after his brother. C, Derry and Deso quickly followed them out the window as B made a beeline towards the forest outside of town as fast as he could. A few moments earlier, what do you think I should do about this fox? Naruto asked himself as he leaned against a tree outside of the village. Well let's weigh out our options. If you say no nothing will happen with your life and you may lose a client. The fox replied. But if I say yes? Naruto asked. You'll be given a family. Deso and Aan will become your in-laws and you'll have a wife. You won't have to live out of inns anymore. You live in a castle and have servants and guards and will never have to raise another finger for the rest of your life. The fox informed him. Anything else? Naruto asked, he liked the idea of having a family, and he did like old man Deso, but he still wasn't sure. You get to have sex with Naomi. The fox replied. Naruto blushed deeply and then quickly scolded himself for the thought. Anything else? He asked again. You'll be protected from the leaf. If you're married to a feudal lord then they wouldn't be able to force you to go back to the village, and if they tried, it would mean war. The Kaiubi informed him. I'd be able to stop hiding. Naruto asked. A family was the big one, but being able to stop running from village to village waiting for the next time the toads tried to summon him to Mount Mayaboku. Naruto thought back to the first time the toads had tried to summon him there. The fox had told him that it would probably happen and that he needed to be ready for a lot of pain when it did. When it finally did happen, Naruto felt like his very soul was being pulled from his body. When the toads tried to summon him, the nine tails fought back, he had Naruto tear the seal slightly to allow some of his power to flow out of the cage at a regular basis. And when he felt the tug of being summoned, the nine tails flooded Naruto's body with its chakra, stopping the summoning, the beast was then pitted in a battle of wills as its chakra tried to hold Naruto in place while the toad's chakra tried to pull him away. The battle went on for only two minutes before the tugging stopped. Whomever had performed the reverse summon had either run out of chakra or lost control of the jutsu. Naruto was left in agony, he felt like every cell in his body had burst all at once. This game of tug of war happened two more times over the course of the next few weeks before finally the nine tails came up with a plan. Knowing that it couldn't stop the toads from attempting a reverse summon, the beast decided to do the only thing that it could and that was to stop them from pinpointing its chakra when they tried to reverse summon. The fox guessed that sooner or later sensory ninja would try to locate where its chakra was and head to its location. So the fox taught Naruto what it could about seals and then had him create some chakra displacement seals. This all took about two months before Naruto had succeeded and at the time they were hiding in a country that neighbored the lightning in the hope that the leaf wouldn't suspect that they actually lived there. Once the seals were done they went on a four-month journey to all the other countries to plant the seals. The only country they didn't go to was the fire. Over all this time the toads had tried over three dozen times to reverse summon him and each time they met with resistance from the Kaiubi. Naruto was suffering as a result of the struggle, each time his body would be racked with pain as two powerful forces tried to pull him in two separate directions. Once they had finished planting all the seals all over the world, the two returned to the land of lightning and waited for the toads to try again. 
There was nothing the Nine Tails could do about the reverse summon, but it could stop the Toads from locating Naruto and telling the Leaf Ninja where he was. Finally, it happened, the Toads tried once again to reverse summon him, and they once again met with resistance, though this time as he fought back, the Kyubi felt bits of its chakra vanish. He knew that the seals that they had created were coming into effect. To anyone who was looking for a sudden outburst of the Nine Tails' power, they would sense it coming from over six dozen locations, all over the planet. And like that they were suddenly safe to stay in one area. They still watched their backs knowing that the leaf might get lucky and guess the right location, but they both felt much safer, sticking around a certain area for a long period of time. Still there were times when the reverse summon was more powerful, and the struggle went on for more than 10 minutes at times like these Naruto wished he was dead, the pain was so excruciating. Every time the Nine Tails fought back, its power would be released, Naruto often shifted appearance, his eyes turning red, his whiskers turned dark, and his nails turned into claws. It got bad at times, but only once did it ever go so far that the one-tailed cloak appeared, and the combination of being reverse summoned and wearing the one-tailed cloak almost put Naruto back into a coma. Hey kid you don't have time to think about that. You've got to make a decision when it comes to this marriage thing. The fox interrupted his nostalgia. Should what do you think I should do? Naruto asked, the fox. Marry her. You get a wife, a family, a home, and some damn safety. The nine tails replied. Yeah maybe. Plus if I'm the husband of a feudal lord, then everyone will know who I am, and the leaf will know where I am. That means they will have to stop the toads and all the damn reverse summons. Naruto said to the Kaiubi. True. It agreed. Okay I think I have an ans Naruto stopped as a very familiar pain coursed through his body. No not again fucking stop already. Naruto hissed aloud as he fell to his knees. The nine tails began to envelop Naruto in his chakra and fought back against the invisible force that was trying to pull Naruto to Mount Maiboku. Go to hell you little toad bastards. The tailed beast roared angrily. Suddenly the nine tails became very worried, the force that was trying to summon Naruto was much greater than any they had faced before. He would have to increase his power in order to fight it, that would mean enveloping Naruto in the one-tailed. Naruto I'm having some problems I need to up the power. The Kaiubi informed him. Just do it. Naruto hissed through his teeth as he writhed in pain. The nine tails quickly released more power and Naruto was quickly covered by the one-tailed cloak. Naruto continued to writhe in agony as the nine tails power coursed through him. He felt the power of the reverse summon weaken and for a moment Naruto felt relief pass over him. The feeling didn't last as suddenly the power of the jutsu increased. What? The nine tails roared as he felt the summoning power increase in strength. Release him. A voice echoed through Naruto's head. Naruto's mind was in whirlwind of pain, he couldn't focus, but something told him that he should recognize that voice. I'm not going back. Naruto finally shouted aloud. Did the nine tails growled as he felt the reverse summon begin to activate if he didn't think of something fast, then they would both be taken to Mount Mayaboku. Do something. Naruto suddenly pleaded to him. The fox's eyes shot wide, in the last three years, his relationship with Naruto had changed. They weren't just demon and host, the nine tails had taken Naruto as his student, they were friends. Naruto I need to release more power, but if I do, then the second tail will manifest. The beast informed him. I don't care. I'm not going back to that hell. Naruto shouted in reply. Naruto boy listen to me. A new voice in his head began to say but was cut off when the nine tails released a mighty roar and forced more of his power into Naruto. Suddenly the second tail manifested. Naruto let out a wail of pain as he suddenly shot to his feet, the power of the nine tails overriding the pain of the reverse summon. Suddenly a familiar dark-skinned man with white hair and glasses showed up in front of him. You letting the beast out to play, you must be having an awful day. Be said to him. Those damn toads was all Naruto muttered as he began to stumble about, losing control of his body. Toads. What's up with you fool, you fool? B asked as suddenly A, C, Derry, and Deso appeared next to him. What's the meaning of this? A asked Naruto as the nine tails chakra swirled around him. Something about toads. B said with a shrug as his own eight-tailed cloak enveloped him and he started to walk towards Naruto. B be careful. A ordered as he watched his brother close in on Naruto. I'm not going back. I'll never go back to that hell. Naruto shouted as he suddenly lashed out at B. B easily dodged the strike and caught Naruto's hand, he then quickly closed it into a fist and punched his fist to it. What seems to be going on here fox? Came the ox's voice. The nine tails watched as B and the eight-tailed ox manifested in front of him. So you're the eight-tails Jinchuriki. I knew I smelt you somewhere ox. The fox said through gritted teeth. What seems to be the problem? The ox asked as he leaned closer to the fox. Those damn toads are trying to reverse summon us to Mount Mayaboku. The fox replied, no time to be snide. Oh then your host's comment about toads make sense. The ox stated as he watched the nine tails struggle. What do the two of you want either help or leave, I'm busy. 
The nine tails roared at them. We'll help you fight, but first I have a question, as is my right. B replied. What is it? The fox roared at him, as he felt the reverse summon grow even more powerful. Since we don't have a lot of time I want you to rate his life on a dime. 1 though 10, how tough has his life been? B wrapped his question. The 9. The fox replied, not even caring about the irony. B stared at the fox for a moment before he nodded and looked back at the ox. By late tails, do you got something that can turn the tide in this struggle of pride? B asked him. Yep alright fox, let's link our chakra for a moment, and the combined force of chakra should be enough to break the reverse summon. The ox stated, as he moved forward and stuck out his fist for the nine tails. The nine tails glared at him for a second, before relenting, it was either this or go back to the leaf. With a huff he stuck his fist through the cage and touched fists with the ox. You ready? The fox asked. Yep on three. One. Two. Three. Suddenly the two released a combined burst of chakra, the overflow of chakra caused B and Naruto to fly apart and slam into the surrounding trees. Did you succeed? Came Naruto's voice. The fox felt Naruto's consciousness quickly fading. Yes with a little help. Go ahead and sleep now Naruto. The fox told him, and like that Naruto was out. What happened B? A asked his brother as he got to his feet. Leaf was trying to reverse summon him. Kid didn't want to go back. The fox says his life was bad, and that explains why the kid was so mad we should go through with Daiso's plan, if only just so we can help this little man. B answered his brother. Let's take him back to my castle. We can have him rest there and he can give me his answer later. Daiso stated, staring at Naruto with a little worry. See take him back to the castle. B, Derui, Daiso, let's go. A commanded them. Where to? Daiso asked, as A walked by him back towards the village. The deal with everyone who felt that. A answered, as he motioned to Naruto. Right. Daiso nodded and followed after him. C quickly walked over to Naruto and knelt down next to him. He let out a sigh before kneeling down to pick him up. Things are about to get very interesting around here. C muttered as he got Naruto on his back and began to carry him towards the village. Yes they are. The fox muttered in reply, as he settled down in his cage, tired from yet another bout with the mysterious toad summoner. The Kaiubi had to wonder as he fell asleep who the two voices were. Okay here's this chapter 1 no it's up quickly, but I love Naruto a lot, let me know what you think, and please offer feedback. Chapter 3. Ugh Naruto whined as he opened his eyes from a dreamless sleep. Where am I? Naruto asked as he sat up and looked around a very elegant room. He looked down and saw that he was laying in a large king-sized bed that looked like it belonged to royalty. I think this is Hiyoto's home. The Kaiubi commented. What makes you think that? Naruto asked as he stood. Um I don't know maybe the giant Hiyoto family crest on the wall tipped me off. The fox replied sarcastically. Naruto glanced over and saw the crest, it was an image of three swords crossed with each other and wrapped in lightning. Oh. Naruto muttered as he glanced down at his clothes. Naruto usually wore dark brown pants that had a lot of pockets for ninja tools. He also wore a black jacket and a black hooded cloak to hide his hair and body. He also wore a kitsune mask whenever he went to speak with a client. After a moment of scanning the room, Naruto thought inwardly and entered into his subconscious. What happened Fox? Naruto asked as he stood before the great beast. The reverse summoning was extraordinarily powerful this time. I almost couldn't fight it off, we ended up having some help from the eight tails and his jinchuriki. The fox replied. The eight tails? You mean he's nearby? Naruto asked, slightly worried. It turns out he was that white-haired guy that was with the rakage earlier. The fox replied. Oh Naruto said nervously as he recalled seeing the rakage with Daiso earlier. Hey fox, how long was I out? Naruto asked after a moment. Just over a day. The fox replied. Damn they almost got us this time. Naruto commented as he spotted his cloak laying at the foot of the bed. He quickly grabbed it and threw it on, and then proceeded out the door. Something was different this time it felt like there were two presences, trying to pull us back. The nine tails informed him. What do you think this means? Naruto asked as he made his way towards the castle's main audience room, where he hoped Aso would be. But they're trying harder to get you back. The fox guessed. Damn why can't they just leave me alone? Naruto asked, more to himself than to the fox. You know why? The demon answered with a huff. Naruto stopped and clenched his fists with anger. The nine tails sensed his host's growing anger and decided to speak up, I'm sorry. Don't be. It's not your fault they think of you as a weapon. Naruto replied as he let his anger fade. Let's go find Daiso. I'm sure he's eager to see if you're alright and to hear your answer. The fox suggested after a moment of silence. Answer? Oh that's right. That whole marriage thing. What the hell am I gonna do about that? Naruto asked. What do you mean? I thought you had already decided to go through with it. The nine tails asked with a tilt of its head. I did but now that I think about, I know that I was being selfish when I made that choice. 
plus I don't want to put Daiso and his family in danger. If I marry Naomi, all of a sudden, the whole fire country is going to be calling for my deportation. Not to mention that the leaf will probably send Shinobi to try and make me go back. Naruto explained to the fox. So what? We keep running. How long will that last? How long before they try to reverse summon us again? Whatever they did last time, it almost worked. We need help, otherwise, one of these days we'll be back in leaf custody. And if you thought they treated you horribly before, I can't imagine what they'll do to you now that you're a rogue. The fox argued back. So what? Are you asking me to put my own selfish needs before Daiso and the lives of his family? Are you asking me to put them in danger? Naruto started to grit his teeth in anger as he asked those questions. Yes. The great beast replied, honestly. Naruto let out a dry chuckle, well at least you're honest. Hey. I may be a lot of things, but I am not the kind of fox to hide what he's really thinking. The fox shot back. I just don't know what to do. On one hand I would love to have a family, I mean Daiso is awesome, Ayan is weird, and Naomi is is something, but on the other hand, I don't want to put them in danger, plus I would feel like I was using them. Naruto weighed his options. So then why don't you tell Daiso why you're really here? I mean I'm sure the whole fucking village felt my chakra the other day, so I'm sure Daiso is suspicious if not fully aware of what you are. Ask him for some advice. The fox suggested. Okay that's what I'll do. Naruto said with a nod as he entered into the main audience chamber and found Daiso, sitting comfortably on his throne, talking with Lady Ayan. Naruto you're awake. Daiso exclaimed happily as he shot to his feet and walked towards Naruto. Hey there old man. Sorry for the inconvenience. Naruto apologized as he walked towards them. It's not a problem Naruto. I'm just glad you're awake. Daiso said as he reached Naruto. I think there are some things that you and I need to talk about. Naruto stated after a moment, giving Daiso a look. Daiso stared back at him for a second before nodding and making a motion for Naruto to follow him to some place more private. Elsewhere, stop pacing Sakura, you're giving me a headache. Tsunade complained as she held her head in her hands. Sorry it's just I'm nervous. You said Master Jiraiya was coming back today, and I really want to know how his search for Naruto has gone. Sakura replied. I know, he'll be here any minute, so just calm down. Tsunade told her, as she glanced at the other members of Team Kakashi, which consisted of Kakashi himself, the newest member Sai, and Sasuke Kachiha. She stared at Sasuke for a second, when suddenly Jiraiya appeared in the room. Geez, Tsunade I walk through the village gates and immediately get jumped by a team of Anbu demanding I show up at your office. You must be really eager. Jiraiya stated with a stale face. Last report from you indicated that you and Lord Fukasaku were going to try something. I assume something happened if you've finally decided to come back to the village. Tsunade stated as Team Kakashi began ogling Jiraiya intently. Yes well I've got some good news and some bad news. Jiraiya informed her with a scratch of his head. Alright what's the good news? Tsunade asked after a moment. Lord Fukasaku and I were able to test a form of summoning that should be strong enough to bring Naruto to Mount Maiboku. Jiraiya began to explain. How is that? Tsunade asked aiming him intently. By entering sage mode and fusing with Lord Fukasaku, I was successfully able to enhance the power of the reverse summoning jutsu. I believe with a little practice Lord Fukasaku, Lady Shima and myself can successfully reverse summon Naruto to Mount Maiboku. Jiraiya explained. At hearing that Sakura and Sasuke began to get excited. So then what's the bad news? Kakashi asked, sensing a butt. While we were attempting the reverse summon we were able to pinpoint Naruto's location, due to an external source. Jiraiya began, Sakura and Sasuke both tensed at hearing that, knowing that there must be a reason why this is bad news. And what kind of external source was that? Tsunade asked. It was the Eight Tails. Jiraiya answered simply. What? How is that possible? Tsunade acted, as Team Kakashi, minus I let out a collective groan. We were close to succeeding, we could feel the Nine Tails' power weakening, and then all of a sudden another demonic power overwhelmed the Jutsu, and we were forced to stop it. Lord Fukasaku was able to identify it as the Eight-Tailed Ox. Jiraiya explained. So that means that Naruto is in the cloud. Tsunade stated, as a look of horror took up residence on her face. No, the power surge came from the border of the Land of Lightning, he isn't in the cloud yet, but he is with the Eight Tails Jinchuriki. Jiraiya informed them. So there's still a chance to get Naruto back? Sakura asked hopefully. A slim chance, but we have to move fast. If we know where he is, then it's highly probably that the Akatsuki know where he is as well. Jiraiya stated. You're right, Kakashi, got get Team Asuma, Kurinai and Guy. You're all going on a mission. Swan told them. All four nodded and vanished. Now Jiraiya, tell me everything you know Tsunade ordered, giving him a look. Well I think I'll have to sit down for this one. Jiraiya began with a sour look. Back at Naruto's location, and you see I would feel so guilty if I agreed to this whole marriage thing, without actually having any feelings for Naomi, plus I don't want to put you or your family in harm's way. 
Naruto finished explaining to him. He had spent the last half hour explaining to Daiso everything. He told him about being the Nine Tails Jinchuriki, he told him about having a horrible life and how the leaf treated him like a monster. He told him how Sasuke had to try to kill him and the leaf would have let him. Aiso and Aan listened intently the whole time and didn't interrupt him once. On more than one occasion the two would grimace as Naruto explained how he was beaten and then neglected hospital care because of what he was. Finally as he finished Aiso adopted a sad smile, you've been honest with me Naruto, so I feel like I should be honest with you. I have known for quite a while what you were. It was your appearance that tipped me off, we have been aware for quite some time that the Nine Tails Jinchuriki was somehow connected to the fourth Hokage. Seeing as how you're a spitting image of him, it wasn't hard to figure out. When I first met you, I wanted to keep you close so that I could keep an eye on you. At first I thought you were a spy or something, but after getting to know you, I learned that you were a rogue. I wanted to keep you close in the hopes that you could help the Land of Lightning prosper. So I must apologize for tricking you. I want you to know however that over time I have come to see you as a friend and I hope you can forgive. Daiso told him and offered an apologetic bow to top it all off. Naruto gave him a small smile before replying. There's nothing to feel bad about old man. Even if you were just keeping an eye on me, you were doing more for me than the leaf ever did. Naruto told him. Thank you Naruto. It is good to know that there is no hard feelings between us. Daiso stated with another bow. So about the whole marriage thing Naruto began, still torn between what to choose. Naruto, since yesterday, the Reikage and I have been discussing a plan that would benefit you and the Land of Lightning. If you would be willing to indulge us for a few moments. Daiso began as he stood and nodded towards an open window. Suddenly A, B, C, and Derry appeared in the room. Naruto this is the Reikage, Lord A. Daiso informed him. Upon hearing this Naruto stood and offered a polite bow. It is good that we have officially met. Daiso and I have been discussing what to do about you and I believe we've come up with a good plan. The Reikage began to explain as he stepped forward. Naruto glanced at the Reikage's group and noticed B giving him a look. Naruto that is the Eight Tails Jinchuriki. The fox informed him. You're the Eight Tails thanks for helping me yesterday. You really pulled me out of a jam. Naruto thanked B with a bow. No problem fool, you fool. B replied. Fool. Naruto asked a little confused but the Reikage just waved it off. We have a plan and if you're willing to follow through with it then hopefully the leaf will get off your back. The Reikage began. Okay so what's this plan? Naruto asked, refocusing on A. We have you marry Nayumi. A told him straightforwardly. What? That's the plan. Naruto asked slightly confused. Yes you marry her and play the part of loving husband. This will set things in motion to help ensure that the land of fire is unable to move against you. Daiso explained. So you want me to marry her so the fire can't export me? Naruto asked. That's what I was saying. The fox stated with a chuckle. Don't worry, the marriage won't be permanent. It will be a mission. A informed him. A mission? Naruto asked, still confused. Yes Naomi will be given the rank of Chunin and she will be given a mission to serve as your bodyguard. You and she will then be married, this will serve as your cover. The marriage will be official, with all the documents that brings. You will become a citizen of the Land of Lightning and because you would be the husband of a feudal lord, you would gain certain privileges. Like protection under the Land of Lightning. If you agree then at the very least you will have the land of fire off of your back and the leaf will no longer be able to take any official action against you, like reverse summoning you. If they try, we can go to the lightning daimyo and he could threaten the fire daimyo with war for authorizing an attack on a citizen of the lightning. They explained to him. What about Naomi? I mean, how would she feel having to go through with this and stuff Naruto asked, not sure how to correctly word it. Look Naruto, the two of you will work out how to make this work. We're not asking you to sleep with her, just to pretend like you're her husband for a while. Aan informed him. For a while. Naruto once again made a face as he asked. Yes this wouldn't have to be permanent, just until we were sure that the leaf and the fire had given up. Daiso added. And the price for this protection? The Nine Tails asked, to which Naruto asked the same question. If, once we are sure that you are safe, you choose to remain married, then you will serve as a protector of the Land of Lightning. We won't ask you to go to war or anything, just to serve as a defender of what would be your home. Daiso answered him. And if I choose to break off the marriage? Naruto asked out of curiosity. Then you will come to the cloud and be made a shinobi. As a Jinchuriki, you are too powerful to let Rome free. So I would have to ask that you join the cloud. A answered with authority. That's all. Naruto asked, giving A a look. Regardless of which direction you decide on taking, I will ask that when you are ready you be trained in how to control your biju. A added. I can do that. Naruto said with a nod. After a moment of silence Naruto finally asked, why are you guys helping me? I mean, everyone back in the leaf treated me like garbage, like a monster. Why are you so nice to me? 
I'm not nice, I'm civil. A answered. I don't trust you, and I will be watching you. But the last thing I want is for the nine tails to run rampant, plus with you here, the leaf has lost a lot of its leverage in the world. I'm not doing this for you, I'm doing this for the cloud. A informed him, in a matter-of-fact sounding voice. O Naruto stated, with a mixture of hurt and relief. Hurt because the of what the rakage had said, but relief because at least he was honest. He was hiding behind a fake smile. The rakage made it clear in the way that he looked at Naruto, if he stepped out of line, then the rakage would kill him. Like I said Naruto, I consider you a friend. And I wouldn't feel right, letting you continue to suffer at the hands of the leaf. Daiso added. Naruto couldn't help but smile at the old man. Okay I'll do it. I'll marry her, and with your permission Lord Rakage, I would like to become a shinobi of the cloud. Naruto stated politely. I will have everything set up, you will journey to the cloud, once your honeymoon is finished. There you will be given a crash course on what it means to be a hidden cloud shinobi, and we'll go from there. A told him. Thank you Lord Rakage. Naruto said with another bow. Please A Anne, fetch Naomi, we should begin preparations at once. Daiso asked his wife. Of course. A Anne stated as she stood and left. Well what now kid? The fox asked. I don't know I guess we just hope for the best and try to make Naomi feel comfortable about all this. Naruto answered in his head. Oh you dirty boy. The fox chided. That's not what I fucking meant. Get your mind out of the gutter fox. Naruto shouted in reply to the beast. The fox simply laughed aloud in reply. A short while later A Anne returned with Naomi who almost visibly cringed when she saw Naruto. Her father and the rakage took her aside and began to explain things to her. Naruto was sure that they were telling her everything about him, since more than once she would look over at him, though only one of the looks held her usual resentment, the rest almost looked sad. What do you think is going through her mind? Naruto asked the fox as he be, C and Derui all stood off to the side watching as the young Kinoichi was briefed. I hope he's gentle with me. The fox replied. Naruto was about to scold him, but couldn't because he found the statement to be hilarious. See, she's fun to tease, and now you two can officially bicker like a married couple. The fox added. You're unfucking believable Naruto told the fox as he audibly snickered. The, C, and Derry all glanced at him when they heard him giggle. Naruto noticed their looks and smiled. Sorry the fox made me laugh. C and Derry both made a face while B smiled. Padding with you beast can be fun at the very least. B stated. I think you're losing your touch. The ox commented. Shut up fool, you fool. B shot back, but without an argument the ox knew he was right. After a few moments they all saw Naomi step away from her parents and A and stare out the window. It was about five minutes before she turned and nodded. A gave her a look before nodding at her. Aso and Aan both smiled as Naomi turned and started to walk towards Naruto, as she walked by him she forcefully grabbed his hand, come with me. She hissed as she dragged Naruto away. What's up? Naruto asked with a grin as she dragged him into the hallway. Look I only agreed to do this because Lord A asked me to, and it's my duty as a shinobi and as future feudal lord of these lands to do everything I can to keep them safe. Naomi explained as she gave him a hard look. Naruto nodded and smiled to show that he understood. Now there are a few things we need to get straight. First, I've been asked to pretend to be your wife and to keep you safe, and as your bodyguard, you do what I tell you, she began, Naruto offered her a nod to show that he agreed to that term. Secondly, I will play the part of loving wife, and you will play the part of dutiful and caring husband, you will do everything that is required of you, and you will do it with gusto. We will play our parts, and play them well. We need to make this believable, so if we need to walk down the street holding hands and smiling, I don't want to hear any complaints from you. Understood, no complaints. If I want to stay safe, then I need to make this believable. Naruto replied with a smile. And lastly if I catch you peeking on me again, I will crush your balls and feed you your own. She said to him in a menacing whisper. Naruto held up his hands and surrendered. What should I say to make her feel better? Naruto asked the fox. I don't know, just say something, compliment her but don't be creepy about it. The fox added quickly as Naruto began to speak. You know you were one of the prettiest girls I saw that day. Naruto stated with a bit of a blush. Naomi stared at him for a second before replying with a sly smile, I know. Naruto looked up at her as she turned and walked back into the room. Well fox I think things are about to get very interesting. Yes they are. The fox replied as Naruto followed after Naomi to discuss this mission with the others. Elsewhere, the four of you will lead your teams to the land of lightning a try to pinpoint Naruto. Team Kurinai will locate him. Team Kakashi will try to convince him to come back. If that doesn't work, then Team Asuma will capture him. If that fails them Team Guy will take him down and bring him back by force. Tsunade explained the mission. Yes, ma'am. The four stated at once. You are to complete this mission without being identified. The Eight Tails Jinchuriki could be close to Naruto, so you will need to be careful. Above all else do not cause a problem with lightning. 
Sunaid clarified to them, yes, ma'am. The four resonated again. All right, gather your teams and leave immediately. Sunaid ordered. The four nodded and left to get their teams. Sunaid sat in silence for a moment before speaking, are you going to, Jiraiya? I'm going to try and figure out why Naruto has escaped the eyes of my network all these years. Jiraiya's voice came from just outside the window. Fine you do that. Sunaid stated with a huff. Down in the village, so we've finally found him. Sasu commented as he and the rest of the rookie nine plus team guy stood waiting for their senseis to finish speaking to one another. I can't believe it's been over three years. Ino stated. I can't believe it either. It's felt much longer than that. Sakura lamented. Are you too eager to see him again? Tenten asked, aim Sasu can Sakura. Yes Sakura replied while Sasu offered a nod. I truly hope we find our friends soon. Lee stated, to which the other nodded. You all seem to be forgetting that Naruto was sensed in the vicinity of the Eight Tails. It's possible Naruto has defected. Shino informed them. Naruto. No way. Kiba said with a shake of his head, there's no way he would betray the leaf, you all remember what he was like, all that hokage talk. There's no way Naruto would just abandon us. I agree, with Kai Kiba. There's no way na Naruto would betray us. Hinata agreed. We'll just have to see. Shikamaru said with a sigh. Oh come on Shikamaru, you don't really think Naruto would betray the leaf, do you? Ino asked, giving her teammate a look. The guy vanished after beating Sasuke in the Valley of the End, he could have come home or waited at the valley, but he didn't, he left. I don't know why, but something about that doesn't sit well with me. Shikamaru replied. Let's not worry about the why right now. For now we should worry about simply finding him. Niji stated with a shake of his head. I agree with Niji. Choji agreed. Let's just find that moron and bring him home. Sasuke stated with a huff, Sakura shot him a look, but could see that he was very deep in thought. Sai simply listened to the group talking, he didn't say anything or open his mouth. After a moment Kakashi, Gai, Kurinai and Asuma walked over and informed their teams that it was time to go. As they left Sai couldn't help but think of the orders he received from Danzo. If Naruto Uzumaki does not return to the leaf, then you are to end the threat that he poses to us. Is that understood? Yes my lord. Sai remembered replying. Come on Sai. Sakura shouted to him. Sai glanced up and realized that the others were already walking away. Oh sorry. I'm coming. Sai said with a fake smile as he ran to catch up. It will take us just over three days to get there, so let's hurry. Kakashi stated to the rest of the team. They all nodded and proceeded to run, aiming to reach their old friend as quickly as possible. Back in the lightning, do you think Naomi will be able to do it? A asked, as he drank sake with Deso. Of course. She's never failed a mission. That girl is the pride of the Hyoto family. Deso boasted. I hope you're right. With the nine tails on our side, the leaf will lose all of its power in the world. A stated, as he took a drink. I can tell he doesn't hate them, the people of the leaf. He understands why they treated him like that. But he is afraid of them, and with a little push, that fear can turn to anger and hate. If Naomi succeeds in her mission, then either Naruto will love the lightning and cloud enough to defend us against leaf, or he'll hate the leaf, enough to want to destroy it. Either way, we win. A so stated with a grin. If this plan of yours works day so, you will be a hero. It was wise of you to build such a bond with the boy all these years. A praised him. You think too highly of me, Lord A. I offered the boy money in exchange for services. I offered him advice in exchange for friendship. My plan was to build a bond with the boy so that he would consider this place home, that way he would defend it if the need ever arose. It was only because of my daughter's own self-obsessed zeal that I was able to bring Naruto into the family and all but cement his connection to the lightning. Deso said as he took a drink. Either way, now we sit back and wait for the leaf to make its move. Sooner or later, they'll come, and when they do, we need to ensure that the impact they have on Naruto is as negative as it can be. A added. Yep, sit and wait. That's a good idea. Deso said with a smile as he took another drink of sake. Meanwhile, Naruto sat atop the castle and stared at the moon. Hey Fox, do you think I made the right choice? Naruto asked himself. They offered you protection, you took it, there is nothing wrong with that. Follow through with the plan and you will finally have a place in this world. The fox replied. Yeah, I guess you're right. Naruto stated back with a bit of a huff. What's got you so down? The fox asked. I don't know something just feels off. You know what I mean? Naruto replied. Nope. The beast answered. You're a big help fox, you know that. Naruto stated sarcastically. I know. The fox replied. Naruto simply made a face at the fox's response. Suddenly a small pebble bounced into his head, it wasn't enough to hurt or anything just to draw attention. Naruto turned and looked over to see Naomi standing a few feet off to the side. Hey. Naruto greeted her. Hey so I was thinking if we're going to pretend to be husband and wife, then we should at least try to learn to tolerate each other. 
Naomi stated, after a moment. Oh well okay. Naruto replied, not sure if she was asking a question or not. So I guess, you wanna go do something? Naomi asked after a moment. Naruto could obviously tell she was having some trouble asking. These her. The fox ordered, and for once he was inclined to agree. Are you asking me out on a date? Naruto asked with a sly grin. No. I just figure we should try to get along or something. If you don't want to, then just say so. Naomi growled in response. Naomi I would love to go out with you. Naruto stated as he stood and smiled at her. You're such an idiot. Naomi said with a roll of her eyes. So what do you want to do? Naruto asked as he walked up to her. I don't know wanna got train. She asked with a shrug. Sure. Naruto said with a little excitement. Naomi almost looked surprised that he was for it. Most guys she knew were either intimidated by her or thought of her as an innocent flower. Either way, they usually didn't agree to train with her. Okay let's head down to the training field. Naomi said after a moment and turned to begin heading there. Ah young love. The fox cooed. Shut up. Naruto shot back as he followed after her. As they walked, there was no way for Naruto to know that closing in on him, right this second, was his old friends, as well as a single Anbu with orders to kill him. The fox lamented on whether the rakage and Lord Deso's plan would work and if he and Naruto would finally be free. Okay that's it for this chapter hope you like it. Yes Deso and the rakage are using Naruto. It will be interesting to see what this leads to and if this will have dire consequences for the leaf or cloud. I wonder what exactly Naomi's mission was. It will be interesting to see what happens. Review and let me know what you think, I went back and changed all the dialogue to make it easier to follow. So thanks to Zion Stable Baby Kid X for the advice. Chapter 4, Shit. Naruto shouted as he just barely avoided a sweeping kick from Naomi. Careful kid. The fox warned. Shut it. Naruto fired back as he continued to dodge Naomi's kicks and punches. I don't know why you keep trying to engage in Taijutsu with her. She's obviously more skilled in hand-to-hand -hand than you are. The fox stated with a roll of its eyes as Naomi delivered a solid punch to Naruto's face. Hey I'm just trying to prove that she's not as good as she thinks she is. Naruto informed the fox as he jumped back to avoid another kick. Well obviously you're failing. The great beast berated him. Shut up you're making me lose my fox. Naruto tried to get out, but a chakra infused kick to the center of the chest, broke his concentration and sent him flying back. That'll show you. The fox huffed. Shut up. Naruto huffed dejectedly. That was pathetic Naruto. At this rate, you'll never one-up me into jutsu. Naomi commented as he got back to his feet. Yeah, yeah. Naruto said with a sigh as he got to his feet. He had been trying the last four days to one-up Naomi into jutsu in the hopes of bringing her down a peg. That didn't work, Naruto was a powerful fighter, but he didn't pause his finesse. So unless he let loose, he wouldn't be able to beat Naomi into jutsu. When it came to fighting, Naomi and Naruto were both similar. They were both proficient in weapon handling and both possessed a handful of medium-range ninjutsu. Where they both shined was in close-range combat. Naomi possessed a great number of close-range ninjutsu as well as excellent tijutsu skills, while Naruto was alright at hand-to-hand, -hand, but where he really shined was in utilizing his Rasengan in close quarters of combat. Of course without using the Rasengan, Naruto was at an extreme disadvantage against Naomi. Naruto had spent the last four days constantly training with Naomi, and each day Naruto tried to beat Naomi at Tijutsu. He came close one. Naomi was as much of a workaholic as Naruto, neither could sit still for more than two minutes, and if they weren't doing something productive, then they were both out training. It made Deso and Ayan smile whenever they saw the two together. Of course, given both of their attitudes, they quickly became rivals and were constantly at odds. Always fighting always trying to beat the other, and in Naruto's case, always pranking the other. In the last four days, the two had fought at least 12 times, and so far, they were scored at 6-6 after this fight. Almost seven of those fights had resulted from Naruto pranking Naomi and her finding him and fighting him. The two were just trying to kill time until their wedding which was to be held in a week to allow for the nobility to show up for the celebration. They kept the training up but really didn't interact beyond fighting each other and then sitting alone in the forest recovering. Only one of their battles was bad enough to send them to the castle's infirmary. It was their third battle, and the two clashed, Naruto with a Rasengan, Naomi with a fist full of lightning. Naruto received a nice burn to his chest, while Naomi got a descent chakra burn on her stomach. It was after that fight that the two began to develop respect for one another, and in result their rivalry formed. But fight. Naruto said with a sigh. You need to stop holding back. You're not going to beat me into jutsu. Naomi told him. Give me a week, I'll be able to beat you. Naruto boasted with a grin. Sure. Naomi said with a roll of her eyes as she turned to walk away. You heading back to the castle? Naruto asked. No I'm going to go rest at the springs in the forest. I'll be back later. Naomi replied as she kept walking. 
Naruto simply smiled and nodded and proceeded back to the village. Elsewhere. Okay guys the only town anywhere nearby is Aski, the capital of the southern provinces of the Land of Lightning. Kakashi explained to the rest of the group. They had just finished running all the way to the Land of Lightning. So what's the plan? Sakura asked her sensei. Okay I think we should split into three groups. One will check out the village one will check the surrounding area and the last will remain here and prepare to assist the others in case they need help. Kakashi informed them. I agree with Kakashi, the backup team should also check on the nearby roads and see if any of the travelers have seen or heard of Naruto. Asuma added. Okay so how are we going to split up the teams? Kurinai asked. Well, before we begin I have to reiterate that this is just an information gathering mission. We are not to make a move against Naruto until we are ready, so if you see him or hear him, you are to vanish from sight and inform the others. Remember that the Eight Tails was sensed nearby Naruto and where the Eight Tails is, so is the Rakage. Kakashi informed them in a serious tone of voice. Okay Kakashi, your team should go into a ski, while Kurinai's team should search the surrounding forest. The rest of us will check the roads. Asuma decided. Okay so before we head out, double check that none of you are wearing anything that is affiliated with the leaf. Kakashi ordered them, everyone did a quick check to make sure that they weren't wearing anything leaf related. All of them had who had them, had ditched their flak jackets and headbands. They also covered up any of their clan symbols, like Sasuke wore a simple black shirt that didn't bear his family crest. Bakashi, to hide his Sharingan, wore a simple black headband that didn't have the leaf symbol on it. Okay let's go find Naruto. Sakura stated after they were ready. Yes let us find our friend. Lee agreed, which earned him nods from the others. Alright, let's go. Kakashi stated, and like that, the teams dispersed. One hour later, Naomi pulled on her shirt as she finished getting dressed. She had just finished bathing in the springs that resided outside of the village. Naomi glanced around and suddenly felt like she was being watched. Her eyes immediately lit up as she recognized the feeling, it had been the same feeling she had felt when Naruto had peeped on her almost two years ago. Naruto you little shit. You better not be out there. She shouted into the forest waiting to hear if someone started to run away. After a moment of nothing, she felt a sudden breeze pass by her, she glanced over to where her headband and weapon pouches had been set. They were now both missing. She felt that sickening feeling, the one only a shinobi gets when they know they've just fucked up royally. Suddenly she heard someone clear their throat behind her. She spun around and was greeted to the side of Team Guy. Naomi recognized the leaf's green beast instantaneously. She recognized him because he was her mother's obsession. It was her mother's lifelong goal to surpass the legendary green beast, therefore, she did everything she could to learn about him. Oh shit. She thought as she saw them. Her mind quickly began to calculate everything it possibly could about this situation. She guessed that the two others and the smaller clone were members of his squad. She knew that the green beast was a leaf ninja. That meant he was here on leaf orders and the leaf was after Naruto. Which meant they were probably here looking for Naruto. She guessed that since the knowledge of whom she was going to marry hadn't been made public, that team guy was only confronting her because she was a cloud ninja. They must not know where Naruto is and are hoping to get some info out of her. Naomi let out an internal sigh of relief, if they were questioning her because she was a cloud ninja, then they didn't know who she really was. If they did know, they would have knocked her unconscious and taken her as a hostage in order to try and trade for Naruto. Naomi knew that if she played her cards right and appealed to the green beast's legendary sense of honor, that she could easily get out of this situation and possibly learn something from the leaf ninja. Naomi watched as the four eyed her intently, she noticed the smaller version of the green beast holding her headband and weapon pouch. She stopped when she looked at him, he was one of the most insane looking weirdos she had ever seen. It took every ounce of her willpower not to burst out laughing at the sight. Hello miss, you are a hidden cloud ninja, if I am not mistaken. Guy suddenly stated. Naomi quickly thought up a plan and responded. She adopted a look of pure horror and stared at Guy with wide eyes. Please she whispered as she swallowed hard and started to back away from the four. Team Guy all adopted looks of confusion at the girl's fear. Please don't hurt me. Naomi begged as she continued to back away from them, raising her hands in surrender. What the hell is she doing? Niji asked with a tilt of his head. Is she afraid of us? Lee asked. This are you alright? We aren't going to hurt you, we just need to ask you a few questions. Guy stated as he took a step towards her. At the step, Naomi let out a scream of terror and turned to try and run. As she turned around she saw that Team Guy had not come alone, Team Asuma was standing a few yards behind her with the same confused looks. At the sight of them, Naomi decided to let out another wail of terror and stumble away from them. Not exactly according to plan, she stumbled and fell to the ground, she didn't break her fearful ruse, even as her knee cracked a rock and a bolt of pain shot through her leg that made her want to curse and blow up the rock in retaliation. Calm down, we're not going to hurt you. We just need to ask you some questions. 
Asuma stated after sharing a look with Guy. Here you're the green beast. Naomi declared with mock fear. She had become incredibly good at putting on fake attitudes, she did it to her father's guards all the time. You know who I am? Guy stated looking slightly surprised. They all heard Asuma groan in annoyance at the fact that their cover was now blown. Please don't hurt me. I'll tell you whatever you want to know. Naomi begged as tears began streaming down her face. She was putting on such a good show that even the elites like Guy and Asuma were believing it. Where is your backbone, you're making a fool out of yourself. Shikamaru stated with a huff. Shikamaru. Ino hissed at him as she walked towards Naomi please, we don't mean you any harm, it's just we heard you mention something about someone named Naruto do you know someone by that name? Why do you want to know? Naomi asked hesitantly. Naruto is a friend of ours and we think he might be lost. We would sure appreciate it if you could tell us where he is. Ino asked with a sincere smile. Well if he's a friend of yours then I guess I can tell you. Naomi stated hesitantly. Good, let's you me and my friend here, go talk over there and leave, the boys here to do what they do best, stand around. Ino replied as she gestured to Tenten to follow them off to the side. Naomi nodded and tried her best to keep the facade up, but the weak girl act was one that really hurt her pride and bugged her, and every moment the desire to fight get building stronger and stronger. Elsewhere, Naruto stood in the forest listening to the sound of nature. It was a calming technique that the fox had taught him. It allowed him to clear his mind of doubt, confusion, anger, etc. He would often do this after a training session and recently, after battling with Naomi. It just made Naruto feel so at peace to stand quietly in a small meadow that sat in a small gap in the forest that surrounded a ski. Kid. The fox spoke up as he felt a presence enter the meadow a few meters away. I know. Naruto replied as he turned. His eyes quickly fell upon three slightly familiar faces and one unknown. It's almost hard to believe how much you've grown. A white-skinned woman with brunette hair and beautiful red eyes stated. Holy shit Naruto I didn't think we'd be the ones to find you. Kiba Inuzuka stated with a look of slight disbelief. Na Naruto. Hinata said in a low whisper that only her teammates could hear. Shino remained silent, eyeing Naruto intently. Well, holy shit, mutt face. Long time no see. Naruto stated after a moment. It has been a while hasn't it? Kiba replied, his eyes locked on Naruto. I see you brought your squad mates. I'm guessing that this woman is your sensei. Naruto asked with a playful smile. All of his old friends lowered their guard slightly at the sight of that old goofy smile. The only one who knew better was the fox, who could feel Naruto's anger and rage, building. What? Don't you recognize Kurinai-sensei? Hinata asked with a little confusion, though she had to struggle to get the words out, and her face was a deep red because of Naruto's new appearance. It's been three years, besides it wouldn't be the first time a friend has forgotten a friend. Shino stated dejectedly. Both Hinata and Kiba grimaced and gave Shino a look that said, too soon. Kurinai glanced at her students for a moment before looking back at Naruto. The blonde still had that cheesy grin on his face that he always used to have and it made her feel slightly at ease. What are you doing here? Naruto finally asked as his smile faded and turned into a distant look. We're here to take you home. Kiba informed him, to which Akamaru barked in agreement. Kiba's right, we're here to bring you back. Kurinai agreed. Go away. Naruto told them simply, his smile long gone. No way Naruto. It's time to come home. Kiba growled at him. Home? Ha. Naruto chided with a roll of his eyes, trying to play it cool, but in reality he was angry, angry and scared. The fox could tell that his host was fretting and decided to speak up. Hey kid, don't be scared, I won't let these bastards take you back to that awful place. The fox told him. I know. It's just Naruto started to reply in his head when suddenly an image of Sasuke with his Sharingan blazing flashed into Naruto's mind. Ever since the Valley of the End, Naruto has held two deep fears, one was being forced to return to the leaf, and the other was to face the guy who had tried to kill him, Sasuke Chia. Naruto always knew that Sasuke was better than him, and it sent a cold chill up Naruto's spine whenever he recalled how it took the Nine Tails Chakra to defeat Sasuke, he could be here Fox. Naruto stated internally as he recalled Kiba's words about them finding him. Don't be afraid kid you've grown a lot over these past few years. I'm sure you can beat him this time, and remember I will always be there to help you if you need it. The fox reassured him. Over the last three years the Nine Tails had been Naruto's only confidant, his only true friend. Thanks fox. Naruto stated as a smile crept across his face. Anytime brat. Now, what are we going to do about them? The fox replied. Kiba was always a descent fighter, and Shino was the second to the top ranked guy in our class. Plus Hanada has the Byakugan, and let's not even start with what that sensei of theirs can do. Naruto told the fox slightly worried. Look just use that technique and you should be able to cause enough of a stir to draw Lord Deso to you. The fox told him. 
In the past four days A, B, C, and Derry had returned to the cloud, they planned on returning in time for the wedding, but had things they needed to prepare for, beforehand. Yeah with Lord Deso's help, I should be able to beat anything the leaf can throw at me. Naruto thought as he let out an audible sigh. Naruto had just a slight amount of knowledge when it came to why Deso Hyoto was so famous in the lightning, it had something to do with the Hyoto family Keke Genkai. By now, these three should be Chuanin level, and their sensei is a Jonin. I would consider you a high-end Chuanin at best, so it looks like you don't have a choice. The Nine Tails stated. I know I'll give it a try, how high do you think I should go? Naruto asked. A 40% conversion should do it. The fox said with a nod. Right. Naruto said aloud as he began glaring at teammate. Right. Right, what? Kiba asked looking confused. Go away. Naruto ordered. No way in hell Naruto, we've waited three long years to find you, and now that we have, we aren't going to let you go. Kiba informed him, earning another powerful bark from Akamaru. We need to buy a little time, I've sent some of my insects to inform the others. Shino stated to his team in a low voice, though with Naruto's Jinchuriki enhanced senses he could easily hear him. The others are going to be pissed that we disobeyed orders and engaged him. Kiba huffed. Ill deal, for now we just have to hold him in place. Kurinai stated, earning a nod from her team. For the last time, leave me alone. I don't want to fight. But I will if I have to. Naruto warned as he began gathering chakra in his right hand. We've looked for you for thr three years. We ka can't turn back, after w we've come so far. Hinata stuttered, not at all looking to fight Naruto. Hinata's right, we've been working too hard to prepare for this day, and now that we've found you, we can't turn back. Kiba stated, his eyes locked on Naruto. All the while Kurinai eyed the young boy intently, she could not see any malicious intent in his eyes, all she saw was anger and fear. Suddenly Naruto's hand began to glow blue, at the sight, all of teammate tensed. Naruto quickly began gathering chakra in his other hand, as he continued to stare them down. Lee please don't fi fight us na Naruto. Hinata tried to plead, but she was still having a hard time dealing with seeing him again, and the glare he was giving her and her team wasn't helping her anxiety. Regardless of what you may believe, we did not come here to hurt you. Shino stated. Ha. You expect me to believe that the Hokage sent you here to take the Nine Tails into custody, peacefully. What a load, the only way the Leaf is getting their precious weapon back is by dragging me there beaten half past dead. Naruto declared darkly. What happened to you Naruto? What happened to the boy who would do anything for the Leaf? The boy who dreamed of becoming Hokage. Kurinai asked, her eyes focused on Naruto's glowing hand. He woke up and finally realized what he was to the people of the leaf. I was a weapon, a monster. The only reason some people tolerated me was so that I could be made into a weapon when I grew up. I now understand why the villagers hated me so much, why the civilian council tried so hard to get me thrown out or killed. I was beaten, abused, neglected, and denied help. The goddamn third Hokage, a man I considered to be a grandfather to me, even abandoned me. So yeah I left the leaf and I'm never going back and when you see the Hokage you can let her know, I have a new dream. A dream where I can live in peace, without ever having to see or hear about that goddamn village ever again. Naruto yelled at them as he finished gathering chakra in his other hand. Suddenly both hands were glowing blue. All the members of Team 8 adopted solemn and sad looks. All secretly wished they had done something to help Naruto when he was younger. Last chance, walk away, or face my wrath. Naruto declared, an intense look on his face. I'm sorry Naruto, but we just can't do that. It's time for you to come home. Kurinai stated with a solemn look. Yeah whatever happened in your head to make you think like this will be fixed and all of those villagers that treated you like garbage will get to see how great you really are. Kiba tried to compliment him, not wanting to fight his old friend. Yes please Naruto. Sasuke, Sakura and Kakashi sensei miss you dearly, Hinata informed him, finally finding her words. At the mention of Sasuke's name, the image flashed into his head again, Naruto had to grit his teeth to stop himself from screaming at them, also I know that Aruka sensei has missed you dearly, I'm sure he would love to see you again. At the mention of his old friend's name, Naruto's face softened. He why mutt face. What? Kiba asked with a confused look. When you get back to the leaf, can you pass on a message to Aruka sensei? I want you to tell him that I'm happy and that I miss him. I want you to tell him that I think about him all the time and I really wish I could be there to see him again. Naruto said with a sad smile. You can tell him yourself buddy, you'll be back soon. Kiba said with a sigh as he cracked his knuckles. No I won't. Naruto replied as he lifted his shirt with his right hand and while it was up quickly pressed his right hand to his stomach. Teammate all adopted looks of shock as the nine tails seal appeared and then a secondary seal appeared over it. They all watched in awe as an inferno of orange chakra engulfed Naruto. They all felt dread as the overwhelming bloodlust of the nine tailed fox filled the area. They must be using some of the demon's power. Kurinai thought, but something felt off. 
This chakra though similar to the Nine Tails, felt like Naruto's as well. She could see that one of his hands was still glowing blue. They quickly scanned Naruto's appearance, he hadn't changed much, his hair was blowing wildly from the chakra, and his whiskers had darkened, but other than that he looked normal. The one other major difference was that his eyes were red, and yet they weren't slitted. 15 minutes Naruto. The fox warned him. Alright I got it. Naruto stated aloud as he suddenly let loose a roar that sent teammate flying back into the trees, as well as blasting his chakra all over the forest. What is this? This isn't like the Nine Tails cloak that Sasuke described, this is different. Kurinai thought as she scanned Naruto again. His features weren't feral, more savage, than feral. The chakra that was raging around him like an inferno wasn't red but orange, and one of his hand was still glowing blue, and Naruto was holding it close to his body, almost like it was hurt or something. Go to hell. Naruto shouted as he suddenly vanished. Kurinai's eyes widened in disbelief as in a single second Naruto crossed the 20 to 30 yards that separated the two of them and was suddenly right up in her face. Right as he brought back his fist to punch her, a white mass slammed into her. Kurinai rolled to the ground and glanced up, just in time to see Akamara land on his feet. She suddenly heard the forest tear itself apart and she looked up to see a large energy shock wave release from Naruto's fist that caused trees to splinter and crack. Are you alright Kurinai-sensei? Hinata shouted. Yes, I'm fine. Thank you Akamaru. She finished glancing at Kiba's dog. Akamaru glanced at her and offered a single bark in reply. I need to focus on the Jonin, the others are unimportant right now. Naruto thought to himself. Good thinking, the others are Chunin level at best, so you can easily defeat them in this mode, you should focus on the Jonin, seeing as how she'll wipe the floor with you the second this mode ends. The fox replied. I know, 14 minutes left. I need to make them count and stop wasting time. Naruto said to the fox as he glanced up a teammate who seemed to be stuck between fear and anger. They want to take me back to the, that nightmare. I'm not going to let that happen. Naruto growled angrily. Naruto. Rape them. The fox ordered with a grin. At hearing that Naruto grinned too and readied himself for another charge. Elsewhere, Niji, what the hell was that? Asuma asked. I can see a lot of chakra emanating from the west, but I can't pinpoint it, it must outside of my range. Niji replied as Byakugan fully active. Could it be Naruto? Tenten asked. Suddenly a small insect landed on Asuma's nose, he recognized it immediately as an aburum beetle. He held out his hand and the beetle jumped down to it and began walking in an end formation on his hand. Asuma stared at it for a second before realizing the message. It's Naruto. Teammate must have engaged him. Asuma stated as he looked over at Guy. Alright, Niji lead us there. Guy ordered. Right. Niji nodded. What about her? Shikamaru asked as his eyes shot over to Naomi, who had been telling Tenten and Ino about Naruto being a mercenary. Ino. Put her to sleep. Asuma ordered. Okay Aishi began to reply but was cut short when Naomi suddenly dropped to the ground and delivered a spin kick, knocking both Tenten and Ino to the ground. Naomi quickly jumped away from the two and put some distance between herself and teams Ten and Guy. Shit looks like they found Naruto, I guess I've got not choice, I need to use it. Asuma, you and your team go help Kurinai, we'll deal with her and join you as soon as we can. Guy told his friend. Right, be quick about it. Asuma replied but stopped when he heard girlish giggling. What the hell is she laughing about? Ino asked as Shikamaru and Choji took up position beside her. This is going to be fun. Naomi stated with a crazed look in her eyes. The look caused the younger members of both teams to tense slightly. You don't want to do this girl. We don't want to hurt you, but we will if we have to. Asuma informed her. Hurt me? Who said anything about you hurting me? Naomi chided with a giggle as suddenly blood began to pour out of her nose. What the hell? Ino asked with a little disgust. Naomi continued to smile as blood began to pour out of her mouth and eyes. A moment went by before blood began to seep out of her ears as well. Every orifice on her body began to bleed profusely. They all watched in horror as blood began to flow from every opening on her body. She's bleeding from everywhere, even her tenton tried to put it into words, but it was just a stomach churning to voice. Naomi's shirt was quickly drenched in the blood that poured from her face, while her pants were quickly changing color from blue to red as blood poured down them. Ino, Tenten, Choji, and Lee were all trembling in fear, while the normally demure Shikamaru and Niji just stared in horror. Guy and Asuma both had looks of shock. Shikamaru was able to focus enough to hear his sensei muttering, no, 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 no over and over again. Asuma sensei, what is she? Ino asked, the horror in her voice still evident. She couldn't even look at Naomi anymore, Naomi had gone from this beautiful young girl who was frightened by their sudden appearance to a grinning bloody psychopath that looked like she had just crawled out of hell. This means that fourth failed. Asuma stated sadly as his head dropped. That's right he failed, and my daddy lived on to have a beautiful baby girl. 
Mayumi informed them, with a crazy smile on her face. Her body continued to bleed and wouldn't stop, pools were gathering on the ground and spreading. I sensei, what is this monster? Niji asked, his eyes trying desperately to define what he was looking at. This is the result of humans breeding with demons. Asuma answered for Guy. This is the second level of a Keke Genkai that only recently appeared in the second great ninja war. All members of the clan can use the first level, but only a main branch member can use anything beyond that. We don't know much about it, and the only person to ever face the third level of the Keke Genkai and live was the fourth Hokage. It was said that the fourth defeated the only known main branch member, but it looks like he failed. Asuma explained. What is she doing, why is bleeding like that? Shikamaru asked, as he grit his teeth and tried to compose himself. The first level of this technique is a healing ability, it causes every cell in the body to multiply and heal at an alarming rate, all except skin cells. The skin is left open, and blood continuously pours from the wound because of the rapidly multiplying blood cells. The first level, to the untrained eye, gives the appearance of invincibility. All member of the clan can use it, but only the main branch can access the later levels. There are four levels in total, and we only know about two of them. Like I said the only person to face the third and fourth levels and survive was the fourth Hokage, and he only ever described the techniques as evil. Asuma continued to explain. So then why is she bleeding like that? Is it because of the blood multiplying at such immense speeds? Ino asked, trying to put her medical training to good use. We don't know why they bleed like that all we know is that besides healing faster, their blood releases a constant subtle Jinjutsu. Guy told them. Subtle Jinjutsu? Ino looked confused and then glanced around to see if she could feel one. Don't bother Ino, this kind of Jinjutsu is inescapable. You see her blood is doing it on its own, it's constantly casting the Jinjutsu so that even if you broke it, you would immediately fall back under it again. It's so subtle and minute that most people don't see what it's actually doing until it's too late. Asuma told his students. So then what is it doing to us? Niji asked as he watched Naomi start to laugh. Attacking our minds. This Jinjutsu is so subtle that it mildly affects your mind. All this Jutsu does is cloud your mind, though the results of your mind being clouded for extended periods of time is drastic. Asuma informed them. Constant exposure to this Jinjutsu causes insanity. First it's paranoia, hearing and seeing things, then it's dementia, and finally you begin to experience suicidal thoughts. The speed at which this occurs is dependent on one's mental fortitude. And overexposure can lead to mental illness, Guy added. And since she's constantly healing there's no way to beat her without drawing this out into a long fight. Shikamaru guessed as he tried to knock back the sickening feeling of watching her bleed, which he guessed was just an added bonus to the Jinjutsu to cause an opponent to feel irritated and nauseous. Yes alright I want you guys to go help Kurinai's team. Guy and I will stay here and try to hold her off for as long as we can, one of you though needs to get Kakashi and bring him here as quickly as you can. Got that. Asuma ordered. All six nodded and quickly leapt into the forest, eager to get away from the giggling bitch and her blood smile. What do you think Guy? Asuma asked as the two readied themselves. Ten minutes at best. Guy replied not wanting to drag this out and have his mind destroyed. Got it? Asuma nodded in agreement as the two prepared to attack. Now that they're gone, Naomi began, as she dropped the psycho act, maybe the two of you would like to see level 3. Both Asuma and Guy shared a look, knowing that this fight had the potential to go south in a big way. Let's play. Naomi said with a smile as she suddenly charged at them, eager to break through and make her way to her charge. Elsewhere, did you feel that sensei? Sakura asked as Team 7 stared back into the forest. Yes I did. Kakashi said in a serious tone of voice. Well let's not waste any time. Let's go get our idiot back. Sasuke stated, which earned a glare from Sakura and two nods of agreement from Kakashi and Sai. The four quickly rushed towards the forest, but Kakashi lagged behind a bit, there was something that was bothering him, a feeling that he had once had a long time ago, but he couldn't place it. Sensei. Hurry up. Sakura called back to him. He looked up and noticed his team was pulling away from him. Oh. Sorry. Kakashi called back and sped up to join them, eager to find Naruto and escape this familiar feeling of dread that seemed to call him back to a place he never wanted to go again. Okay so that's it for this chapter, yes I will explain Naruto's new technique as well as Naomi's bloodline limit. No neither are god powers so don't worry, you'll learn more later, so be patient. Also the chakra cloak around Naruto isn't his Biju mode cloak, it's an orange clear cloak, like when the Nine Tails gives him power. Let me know what you think and until next time, stay beautiful. Bye. Chapter 5, Shit. Kurinai hissed as she dodged another blast of energy from Naruto. She watched as the blast wave from a single claw strike from Naruto obliterated several trees and knocked over a few more. The fight had been raging for a few minutes now, with Naruto focusing most of his effort into attacking Kurinai. 
he ignored Kiba and Hinata who couldn't bring themselves to attack with their full strength and who would only occasionally launch a half-hearted attack. Shino and Kurenai were the only two that were able to fight at full power, though there was a bit of hesitation in Shino's attacks. Something is off here. That isn't the same cloak that Sasuke described from his and Naruto's battle at the Valley of the End. Kiba said with a huff, as Kurenai regrouped with her squad, and the four stared down Naruto. You're right. It's not the same. And something is definitely up with that other hand. Kurenai replied as her eyes once again came to rest on the glowing blue hand that Naruto kept tucked close to his body. She couldn't figure it out. Obviously Naruto had placed some sort of seal over the Nine Tails seal, and that's where this new cloak came from. But something was off about it. It was almost like it wasn't combat ready or something. During the fight, teammate constantly remembered what they had learned about the Nine Tails cloak, and they prepared for it, but none of those abilities appeared. Every time Kurenai, Kibo or Hinata moved in for a close range strike, they were always really quick to jump away, because they were waiting for a demonic red claw made of chakra to rush out at them, but it never came. Also Naruto hadn't used the Rasengan or the clone Jutsu, and Kurenai couldn't figure out why. 8 minutes kid. The Nine Tails informed Naruto. Damn, they sure are persistent. Naruto thought back with a growl. Well maybe if you actually went for the kill, they'd get the point. The fox fired back, accusingly. Look, don't think for a second that I'm avoiding killing them because I care anything. Naruto spat at the fox, with a little anger. Could have fooled me. The fox huffed back in reply. The reason that I'm avoiding killing them is that, if I kill them then the leaf will declare me a criminal, and they might choose to wage war on the cloud, if I join them. As long as I join the cloud without leaf blood on my hands, then there is nothing the leaf can't say. I mean it's not like I could have possessed any secrets of my village or anything, I was a genin. So, I can't kill them yet. Naruto explained. Ah I see. Good boy Naruto, that's what I like to see. It's good to know that there's actually a brain in that big old head of yours. The fox mocked and praised him at the same time. Thanks. Naruto replied ignoring that last part. I sure hope Lord Deso has felt this and is on his way here. Otherwise you're going to get your ass kicked. The fox informed him. I know, I should probably start moving towards the village, maybe I can get someone else's attention instead. Naruto thought as he glanced at teammate. Good plan. The Nine Tails commented as Naruto ready to charge at them again. Elsewhere, Haman sensei, we're almost there. Sakura called back to Kakashi whom was staring off into the forest. He couldn't escape this familiar feeling of dread that was emanating from nearby. At first he thought it was Naruto, but as he got closer to the source, he realized that it wasn't the same feeling he got from the Nine Tails. Kakashi vividly recalled what it felt like when the Nine Tails attacked the leaf. It was a feeling of dread and insane bloodlust. This feeling was different however, mixing with the obvious bloodlust of the Nine Tails was a feeling of chaos. It was almost like insanity itself was emanating from nearby and was mixing with the, the great beast's bloodlust. Hey guys. Came Tenton's voice. Suddenly she appeared in front of them standing on a tree branch. Tenton, what are you doing here? Sasuke asked as he glanced up at her. Asuma and Gai Sensei need Kakashi Sensei to help them out. Tenton informed them. Are they fighting Naruto? Sakura asked with a little worry. No, they sent their teams to help Kurenai Sensei's team, which is the one fighting Naruto. Asuma and Gai Sensei are busy fighting this cloud shinobi who activated some sort of Kekei Genkai that causes her to bleed a lot. Tenten informed them. What did you say? Kakashi asked as he finally recalled where this original feeling of insanity came from. It's some girl who looks to be our age. She activated some sort of jutsu that is causing her to bleed from like everywhere. Asuma and Gai Sensei said it was some sort of Kekei Genkai. Tenten replied. The girl must be his child. Kakashi stated with a shudder. Sensei? Sakura asked giving Kakashi a confused look. You guys go on and help the others with Naruto, I've gotta go help Gai and Asuma. Kakashi ordered as suddenly he dived into the forest. Wait Sensei Sakura tried to call out after him, but he was already gone. Forget about it. Sensei can handle himself. Let's go find Naruto. Sasuke stated after a moment of silence. Yes Sakura said in agreement though, a part of her was worried as to what had Kakashi Sensei so worked up. This way guys Niji and Lee shouldn't be too far ahead. Tenten informed them as she turned and headed off. We should go. Sai stated as he and Team 7 followed after Tenten. That guy and Asuma's position, damn it. Asuma growled as he pulled his fist back. He had just punched a tree and nearly broke his hand in the process. This isn't good, Asuma I'm starting to see things. Guy stated as he glanced around for Naomi. They spotted her standing up in a tree watching them with a slight amount of amusement. They had also been fighting for about five minutes now, and the two men were starting to feel the effects of the blood jinjutsu. The two jonin were in a bad way. They knew from what the fourth had told them that the only way, he theorized, to kill someone with this jutsu was to use a full-body destruction technique. 
something like a fire-style jutsu or bomb tags or something like that. Something that they couldn't regenerate from. Guy was at a severe disadvantage. He may have been much stronger and faster than Naomi, but none of his strikes could cause fatal damage, and he couldn't risk using the inner gates, otherwise the nearby village might take notice. Asuma was in a similar bind, sure he had jutsu that could beat her, but none of them could do it without alerting the nearby village. So he was forced to just use his chakra-enhanced trench knives. By now the entire area they were fighting in was soaked in blood. Naomi now had a few open wounds from where Asuma had cut her open, and where Guy had hit her so hard the bones broke and busted through skin. Even for hardened veterans like Guy and Asuma, it was still hard to watch as some unseen force pulled her bones back into her body and fused them together, or when muscle would visibly heal itself through an open skin wound. True to its very nature her body only healed what was below the skin, not the skin itself, so any cut or stab wound would leave an opening that bled profusely. Naomi was leaking like a hose, blood had soaked her entire body, and now she was a deep red in color, and yet she didn't stop. She just kept bleeding. Blood was soaking everything, the grass, the trees, Guy and Asuma. It was everywhere. So this is what the child of Deso Hyoto looks like. Came a mysterious voice. Naomi suddenly shot around trying to locate it, but didn't see anything, she spun back around and looked down at Guy and Asuma, who seemed to be looking at something above her. She glanced up and saw a figure standing upside down on the tree branch above her. She saw a man, with spiky white hair, dressed just like the other leaf jonin. Shit this is not good. Two jonin was bad, but now I've got no chance. Naomi thought as she jumped from the tree to the ground, her eyes darting between Guy, Asuma, and Kakashi. Kakashi good you're here. Guy said to his friend with his signature grin plastered on his face. Yep sent the kitties to go help teammate with Naruto. I have to ask Guy, Asuma why did you two pick a fight with a cloud ninja? Kakashi asked as he hopped off the tree and landed by their side. We were questioning her about Naruto, for whom she seems to know, when suddenly she attacked us. Asuma informed him. At hearing that, a faraway look appeared in Kakashi's eye, he almost seemed to be deep in thought. You know Naruto? Kakashi asked as he took a step towards Naomi. Both Guy and Asuma tensed, Naomi's jutsu was still active, and they only had a few minutes left before things got worse. Kakashi you know who she is, and you know what that jutsu is. You have to be careful. Asuma warned. I know Asuma I know better than either of you. I was with the fourth Hokage the last time he faced Aso Hyoto. Kakashi stated, as he took another step toward Naomi. You faced my father before? Naomi asked as she held up a kunai. Not personally, and I never got the chance to fight him, but I was with the fourth when he faced off against Aso at the end of the war. The fourth sent me away so that I wouldn't be hurt, but I did return later to see just how much devastation the two of them caused. I know full well what your family is capable of. Kakashi replied honestly. They said your name was Kakashi if you're with the green beast, then that would make you Kakashi of the Sharingan Eye. Naomi stated. She sounded confident, but in reality all of her hope of escaping this fight unharmed went out the window. Her mother was a huge fan of studying the bingo book. She spent hours learning about all the different shinobi that were listed in its pages. She would often tell Naomi about some of the most interesting names within the book. Like the green beast and the copycat ninja. So you know who I am, but I still don't know your name. Kakashi replied, incredibly cool about this whole situation. You can call me Naomi. Naomi replied as she eyed them intently. This was bad, she had to find a way to escape, otherwise she was dead. Not to mention if all three of these guys were Jonin teachers, that meant that they all had squads. Which meant a total of nine people were going to where Naruto was, and obviously he had been engaged by yet another team, that mean 13, Shinobi in total were about to surround Naruto. She had to find a way to get to him otherwise he was doomed, and she would fail her mission. Naomi that's a pretty name. Kakashi commented being overly friendly, which confused Guy, Asuma and Naomi. Thanks I guess. Naomi stated with a confused look. She didn't know if Kakashi was just trying to butter her up for information or if he was planning something. You're welcome. Now if you don't mind me asking, what is your connection to our young friend Naruto? Kakashi asked, still being very polite. I don't know. Naomi answered truthfully. Lover? Kakashi asked. No. Naomi replied simply. Friend? Kakashi guessed. Naomi simply shrugged in response. Rival? Kakashi guessed again. I guess. Naomi replied with a shrug, truthfully the only reason she was bothering to answer his questions was so that she could buy time for an escape, and luckily she thought of one. Okay then well Kakashi began, but Naomi cut him off. If you want to know any more than that, you'll have to ask the more on yourself. Naomi informed them as she knelt down. She saw the three Joan intense at her movement. Naomi saw Kakashi reach for his headband, which she assumed hid the Sharingan that he was so famous for. Got to go. Naomi declared as she sprung into action. 
the Kashi was in the midst of pulling his headband up to reveal his Sharingan, when suddenly blood exploded from around Naomi's calves and feet, and suddenly she went flying through the air at incredible speed. This single powerful jump sent her flying over a mile into the forest, right in Naruto's direction. Shit. Asuma swore as the three men turned to charge after her. What was that all about Kakashi? Guy asked as the two ran. I if that girl is the daughter of Daiso Hyoto, what are the chances that he's here? Kakashi asked giving Guy a look. Asuma overheard the two and quickly adopted a look of fear, as did his fellow Jonin. They all knew what Daiso was capable of. They didn't call him the bloody boar of the lightning for nothing. Meanwhile, son of a bitch. Naomi swore aloud as she pulled herself to her feet. She had not had the most graceful landing and ended up slamming into a tree with enough force to crack a few of her ribs, which were now painfully snapping back into place. As her ribs healed she glanced down at her legs. The blast of blood had caused her pants to be torn to shreds. Any piece of clothing below the knee line was just added shreds. Naomi grimaced in pain as she saw her legs. She could see several large holes where the pressure build up in her legs had caused the veins to explode and blow out of her body. She watched with a little disgust as the profusely bleeding veins healed up and re-entered her body. Well that didn't go quite as planned. Naomi huffed as she finished healing. Unknown to the jonin that were closing in behind her, that Naomi had just used the third level of her Keke Genkai. I need to hurry. Naomi finally focused and ran in the direction of the demonic chakra. I can only maintain this jutsu for five more minutes, I need to get to him now. Naomi told herself as she ran. Ahead, Sasuke, Sai, Sakura and Tenten were running through the forest, they could now feel the rush of demonic energy, and they could tell that its origin was just a few hundred meters ahead. Suddenly, Team Asuma and the other two members of Team Guy jumped down in front of them. Good to see you guys made it. Shikamaru stated with a concerned look on his face. Naruto is up ahead right? Sakura asked. Yep, Niji confirmed it. Shikamaru nodded. Okay then let's go. Sasuke stated. Right with the nine of us, we should be able to beat him, no problem. Ino stated. Don't be so sure that's the nine-tailed fox's energy we have to be careful. Niji stated, though he had a look of slight confusion. Sasuke shared the same look, by now his Sharingan was blazing. What's wrong guys? Lee asked noticing their looks. This doesn't feel like the energy I faced in the valley of the end. Sasuke stated. Nor does it look like the chakra I saw during our fight in the Chuanin exams. Niji added. We need to be careful. He's putting up a fight, so obviously he doesn't want to go back. Shikamaru stated. So we'll be careful, but we are bringing him back. Sakura stated with a look of pure confidence. Yeah. It's time Naruto came home. Lee agreed with enthusiasm. Alright let's go get our friend back. Sasuke stated after a moment and suddenly he dove into the forest. The others nodded and quickly followed him. Ahead, three minutes, Naruto. The fox informed him. I know. Naruto thought back, he was doing his best to hold up against the four opponents, but he was beginning to have trouble. He had tried to move this fight closer to a ski, but they had the unfortunate side effect of leaving him open to a strike from Kiba's fang over fang, technique which had slammed into Naruto's side, causing him injury. Kiba and Akamaru both seemed shocked that they had managed to land the strike, and Kiba at least looked a little guilty that he had hurt his friend. Naruto stood squaring off with teammate, who had their own collection of cuts and bruises. It's okay guys this fight is over. Shino stated after a moment, his teammates glanced at him curiously, when suddenly nine figures burst from the forest and landed next to teammate. Good to see you guys finally made it. Kiba said with a smile. You guys couldn't have waited. Niji asked, his eyes locked on Naruto. Sorry about that. Kiba replied while the rest of his team just had enough decency to look guilty. Forget about it they can be reprimanded later. For now Shikamaru stated as he locked onto Naruto. Naruto stood wide-eyed who the hell were most of these people. Look closer Dumbus most of them are your old classmates. The fox informed him. Holy shit Shikamaru, Ino, Choji, Sakura Sasuke Naruto locked eyes with Sasuke, whose Sharingan was alight with glee. It was a glee of happiness, but to Naruto it looked menacing. At seeing the Sharingan Naruto locked up. Kid. Kid. Shit. The fox thought as Naruto began to breathe faster and faster. Naruto Sakura stated she was stuck between happy and awestruck. What's wrong with him? Ino asked, noticing that Naruto was trembling. Sakura glanced at Ino then back at Naruto. She noticed him shaking, she followed Naruto's stare and found him locking eyes with Sasuke. Sasuke are you doing something to him? Sakura asked, knowing full well that Sasuke could be casting a Jinjutsu on Naruto. No I'm not doing anything. Sasuke replied looking over at Sakura with a confused look. They both glanced back at Naruto who was starting to back away from them. Naruto what's wrong? Sakura asked as she cautiously took a step towards him. She was incredibly weary of the orange inferno of chakra that raged around him. Shit. They all heard someone behind them swear. Niji saw her fist and spun around just as Naomi land on a tree branch. 
She only took a second to analyze the large group of shinobi in front of her before bringing her hands two together to weave a jutsu. Lightning style. Discharge. Naomi shouted as she jumped off the branch and dove right toward Sakura, who still had her focus on Naruto. Sakura stopped as she heard the crackling sound of lightning, she spun around and was shocked to see Naomi only a few feet away, flying towards her. Sakura brought up her arms to block the strike, but right as it was about to hit Naomi stopped. Naomi wondered why she had stopped moving and held the confusion for a second as her up body fell to the floor. She suddenly felt someone holding her ankle and she glanced up to see Sasuke holding her by the foot. Shit. Naomi said aloud as Sasuke spun around, taking Naomi with him. Suddenly he let her go and sent her flying straight toward Sakura, who mercilessly delivered a chakra-enhanced kick right to Naomi's spine and sent her flying towards a nearby tree, which she slammed violently into before falling to the ground motionless. Yumi. Naruto shouted as he watched her go flying. He was suddenly broken from his trance and his eyes were now locked onto Naomi's body off to the side. Not knowing about her Kekei Genkai, any reasonable person would look at the broken bleeding body lying off to the side and think that she was dead. They couldn't tell how much damage Sakura had done to her spine, but they could see that Naomi's skull was split open and she was bleeding profusely. No Yumi. Naruto stated meekly as tears began to stream down his face. Sakura glanced over at Sasuke who was looking at Naruto with a look that said, what the fuck did we do? She looked back at Naruto and saw him staring at the girl she had probably just killed and saw him with tears flowing down his face. Oh no, Sakura stated with immediate regret. Sakura immediately bolted towards where Naomi lay, hoping to save her. All she could think about was that she had probably just killed one of Naruto's friends. Why is it that I can't have anything in this world? Naruto asked aloud as tears streamed down his face. Naomi was his rival, and she may not have been as good a friend to him as her father was, but he still considered her a friend, and now she was dead. Why do you leave bastards always have to destroy my life? Naruto yelled at the top of his lungs, causing Sakura to stop running. Suddenly Kakashi, Gai, and Asuma entered into the clearing. What happened here? Asuma asked as Kurenai made a sad face. They all guessed that the girl that Sakura had just killed was someone Naruto cared about. Am Sakura must be one tough girl if she could take her out. Ino commented, remembering how worried Asuma and Gai Sensei were when it came to fighting her. That strike probably broke every bone in her body and severed her spinal column. Sakura didn't know what she was doing or who she was fighting all she knew was that someone was trying to kill her, so she reacted. Niji stated sadly. Naruto. Time's up. Break the seal. The Kaiubi shouted to its host. Why can't you people just leave me alone? Naruto asked as he looked past Sakura towards Naomi's body. Naruto I'm sorry I didn't know she attacked me and I just reacted. Sakura tried to reply. The first conversation with her long lost teammate in three years and this was how it had to start. You bitch. Naruto shouted as he focused on Sakura. Naruto break the seal. Then you can kill this bitch. The fox told him. Naruto took a step toward Sakura, the killing intent coming off of him was insane. Suddenly Sasuke was in between them. Naruto calm down that girl attacked us. We were just defending ourselves. Sasuke stated. Naruto. Break the damn seal. The fox shouted up to him. By now the orange cloak around Naruto was turning a deep red in color. Sasuke and Sakura both tensed at the sight. I'm going to kill all of you. Naruto growled through his teeth. Naruto. Kakashi tried to talk to him, but Naruto ignored him and took another menacing step towards Sasuke and Sakura. The now red inferno of chakra was condensing into the tails they weren't fully formed, but in a moment or so they would be. Naruto. You have to break the seal you can't control this much power. The fox roared at him, but the rage Naruto was feeling was overwhelming. Naruto the great beast said sadly as he witnessed the memory that Naruto was replaying in his head over and over. Flashback, it was the previous day, after training with Naomi the two went their separate ways. Since the announcement of the wedding, Naruto was allowed to live at the castle, but most of the time he just slept in the forest. He enjoyed the freedom. As was his custom, after a match with Naomi, he would meditate in one of the few open meadows that peppered the forest around a ski. Though this time he couldn't focus on clearing his mind, he was too busy thinking about his earlier fight with Naomi. You really do like her don't you kid? The fox asked, not joking or playing around this time. I don't know I guess. It's not like she'd ever like me back. Naruto replied. Maybe she does you won't know until you ask. The Kaiubi replied. Ah I don't think I'm ready to die just yet. Naruto laughed in reply. Still it wouldn't hurt for you to find a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Just someone to get your mind off of how fucking lonely you are. The Kaiubi stated. Yeah I know. Ha huh, wouldn't it be interesting if I went through with this whole marriage thing and somewhere down the line we actually do fall in love. How weird would that be? Naruto thought back with a smile. Weird. You mean awesome. The fox replied with a laugh. 
Yeah that would be kinda cool wouldn't it? Two people forced together by circumstance, suddenly falling in love we'd be just like my dad and mom. Naruto replied with a calm smile on his face, as he recalled what the Nine Tails had told him about how his parents were forced together, but then fell in love. Well kid you've had the worst luck of anyone I have ever seen, so if I were you, I would be looking for a lucky horseshoe or rabbit's foot to shove up your ass. So that you won't be so unlucky. The fox laughed in reply. Ha ah, will do. Naruto said aloud as he stood and walked out of the field. Then flashback, I'm going to kill you. Naruto shouted as the three tails took shape. Naruto no. Kakashi shouted as Naruto tensed to dive toward Sasuke and Sakura. The two both tensed and ready to run. This oncoming attack was truly going to test their training. Kakashi charged towards Naruto, trying his best to make it to him before he attacked, but suddenly stopped as a figure behind Sasuke and Sakura came into view. Hey Naruto calm down I'm fine. Naomi hissed as she stood. Sasuke and Sakura both looked back at her, their eyes were wide with horror. They both grimaced as Naomi walked by them towards Naruto, they could hear bones snapping back into place, in her body. Sakura shuddered as she saw Naomi's skull snap back together. Naomi? Naruto asked, his eyes wide in disbelief. Yeah it's me I'm fine. Naomi told him as she reached him. Naruto break the seal. The fox stated, knowing full well that his host could hear him now. Oh that's right. Naruto stated, as he lifted his shirt and brought his still glowing blue hand to his stomach, suddenly a seal reappeared and shattered, as the blue aura of chakra around Naruto's hand vanished. It was quickly followed by the nine tails cloak. It was a seal key. Kurenai stated aloud. For what though? Asuma asked. That seal he placed over the nine tails seal, it must have been doing something to combine their chakra or something. He must have had to prepare the seal and the seal key before the fight. Kurenai stated as she recalled how Naruto always kept that hand tucked back. Naomi what happened to you? Naruto asked, extremely worried about her condition. This is just my keke genkai I'm fine. Naomi told him, though from the way she held herself, she was obviously not fine. What few people knew about the keke genkai was that it did nothing to numb or alter the pain, and Naomi was still bleeding from a lot of cuts. That's scary. Naruto commented, with a scratch of his head. Yeah I guess it can be. Naomi replied. Well it's alright as long as you're okay. Naruto said with a smile. No one could tell, but Naomi slightly blushed from his concern. Well isn't this cute? I knew the two of you would get along swimmingly. Came a mysterious voice. Everyone glanced up at a nearby tree, and the younger generation, plus Kurenai, could just hear the three male Jonin sensei's jaws slam into the floor. There standing on a tree branch was Lord Deso, at his side was his wife Ayan, and at their flanks were over a dozen cloud Chunin. Which one of you did this to my daughter? Deso asked as he leaped from the tree and landed in between the two groups. Suddenly every vein in Deso's body began to bulge from his skin, and his eyes turned red and started to bleed. This is level 3. Asuma said under his breath as everyone tensed. I ask you a question which one of you did this to my daughter? Deso asked again. Suddenly the ground around his feet began to crack and break from the pressure of the chakra being released from his. His power was even greater than the three-tailed form that Naruto was in moments earlier. Oh shit this is not good. Kakashi said aloud as he and the rest of the leaf ninja prepared to square off against this man, this living legend of the third great ninja war. Alright that's it for this chapter hope you like, yes I will explain more in the next chap hope you enjoyed later. Oh and for reference I would say that Orochimaru is just above Naruto in his four-tailed form. So that's what I mean when I say that Deso is stronger than Naruto's three-tailed form. What if Naruto marries fire daimyo daughter Sasuke bashing? Thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.